Hello and welcome to the Crow's Nest second live stream. My name is Brandon Kane. Of course, this is going to become now commonplace as was promised you folks. We get over 100 subscribers. I will stream on the often these Mariner games. I love this sport as well as I love football and basketball. So uh, let's talk some more shop. I had a great time yesterday with you guys and looking at this team and, and kind of just discussing it was a tough loss. Verlander really gave it to us. Certainly, it's been an auspicious start already to begin things here as I am starting a little bit of a half inning late. And, uh, and, and boy, not the start you want where the Astros go back to back on home runs off of our ace or not our ace, but our the top rotation starter. I, as I said, I think Gilbert's your ace. Robbie Ray is kind of a solid to me in number two. But uh, the home run bug that has bit him at times over the course of this season came back and kind of haunted them off the first two there. So uh, a tough start here for a Mariner team that's trying to avoid a sweep today. They ended the All-Star break with a 14-game winning streak. Now they are on a two-game losing, or now they're on a two-game losing streak. So see if we can get this turned around. No Julio in the lineup as well. He had an MRI on that wrist and it was negative. So that is um, that is at least nice to see from that standpoint of things. Uh, that's encouraging to see that he's. Uh, that at least maybe this is a truly a day-to-day -day thing and maybe he can avoid the 15-day DL, hopefully. Uh, out the gate here, we've got J.P. Crawford up the plate. He's drawn a 2-1 count to begin things. And swings, at the, swings at the fourth pitch and knocks it foul over to the uh, first base side. A couple kind of weird with the first inning. Ray got hit on two home runs that were very similar pitches right down inside at the knees. That doesn't tend to be on right-handed batters, the place where you're going to usually get yourself... Uh, in harm's way, uh, if as a left-hander goes, it's usually out over the, over the. And uh, Crawford hit another ball foul. It's usually out over the middle of the plate, which is kind of your danger zone for right-handed batters. But uh, you know, on both of these two pitches, those things were right down almost at the ankles on Altuve, and they just put really good swings on it. A little bit like what I was talking about yesterday, where you come out in a game and you're looking for a pitch in a given spot, and you're going to swing at it hard. That's the benefit of having a, a location that you're looking in at. And I was kind of harping on that yesterday with how Verlander was just pounding the top of the zone and a nice eye here by JP Crawford as he's drawn a three, two count. Uh, you know, just, just, he was peppering the top of the zone there, but the middle of the plate. And, and I was just lamenting at times that the hitters couldn't seem to find a way to adjust to that a bit. And I know that that's Verlander's game and he's very hard to hit in that fashion, but nobody even really put uh, and. Crawford hits a weak grounder over to first base. Nobody even put much of a, a fight up on those. They, they all looked just completely overwhelmed on just about every every pitch yesterday. There wasn't even really any hard hit balls overall against Verlander. So uh, outside, of course, the home run that was given up. And uh, so we got one out now. We'll see if we can bounce back. Alex Hyink uh, says, how do you think the Mariners will do in the second half? I think we'll do fine in the second half when things settle out. This, these, this three-game series against the Astros is going to get a lot of Mariner fans up in, a, up in a tizzy, especially if we get swept today, and it's going to get them bailing off. As, as I've seen all year with this Mariner team, I think a lot of fans, as I've said, have a little bit of uh, PTSD. And, and here we go. Nice little hard shot by Ty France for a base hit going oppo. Oppo France. Oppo la France. I, I think you saw this in the early part of the year when the Mariners weren't coming out hot and, and they were looking again similarly to how they'd looked from at least from a record standpoint in recent years and a lot of the fans going, same old Mariners. <sighs> and I get where people are coming from. Like I said, it's PTSD. It's like it's post-traumatic at this point. You know, they've had year after year of having their heart broken with stuff, so I can't blame them if they fall into that, into that standpoint of saying, I, I, I see the exact same signs of what I've seen before and I can't, I can't sit through it again. We got Lewis up at the bat now. Let's see what uh, see what he can do here. First pitch swinging, 94 mile an hour fastball, knocks it out. But I, I think we do got to give this team some patience. I think we also got to consider and remember, Alex, that there's going to be help coming coming aboard. Uh, Mitch Hanninger will be back with this ball club. Uh, uh, Julio will be back with this ball club. Uh, Lewis is just finally looking like he's now going to be able to start to come back and be um, a normal contributing member. I mean, the, the concussion thing was so freakish on the heels of all the stuff that he had been dealing with with the lower leg injury. And so you know, you're adding three real solid bats to your lineup at that point, say nothing if Kelnick can uh, get the call up and then maybe finally you know take that bull by the horns as an opportunity goes. Uh, Lewis uh, now in now on a 1-1 account. Swings again. Knocks it out. Knocks it uh, foul behind him. 
Astro pitchers left a couple of pitches here for Lewis in this bat over the middle of the plate. They've got some good movement to them, but uh, Lewis just not quite able to get the barrel on the bat. So, Alex, I think they'll do well. I think we're going to be in the run for it. I think we're going to be in playoff contention. I don't know that we're ready to go and take the division, but playoff contention is definitely something I think is a very feasible and nice job there by Lewis to fight off a real tough, look like a kind of a curve there. What do they got on the pitch tracker as? Slider? Oh, sinker. That's why it looks so weird. <clears throat> I guess that was a sinker. Man, that thing had a lot of had a lot of horizontal movement for being a sinker. But great job by Lewis there. That's just one of those pitches where just stay alive and fight off. We didn't see a lot of that yesterday. We're, there's going to be good pitches. Fight them off. Fight them off and, and, and just stay in that pocket until you're going to get the pitch that you want to hit. Like yesterday, there was a lot of jumpiness against Verlander. A lot of we've got to be aggressive against this guy early in the count. Um, not a lot of willingness to sort of, uh, you know, kind of just lock it and make him, make him give you a pitch to hit, which he didn't do a lot of yesterday. Uh, Duran, hello. Good to see you. Sector 7. Yo, 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 yo. How you doing? It's good to see you. All right, so we got 2-2 two, two count here by Lewis. Oof. Got him on the, again, they might call that a sinker, but it looks like a curve. That thing looked like a, yeah, that's a curve. That's a 10-6 curve. Tough pitch. We saw Lewis fight off one earlier on that, but that's uh, it's a good pitch there by Valdez, his name. Um, Sector says, my key to this game was Ray to have a baller of a game because this lineup kind of lacks, in my opinion, so far so bad yeah we needed we needed uh, him to come out and do something you look at this lineup today and it's it's why we probably again should be hesitant to draw a lot of conclusions based off of this three game series but yeah you look out in that lineup and you're boy okay more Haggerty, frazier torrens eh, it's a little light it's a little light today another big breaking curveball on the back of the on the back of the plate nice pitch there suarez is throwing with real good control He's got uh, Eugenio, 1-1. One, one. We got some Suarez on Suarez action right now, folks. This is some familial stuff right here. We'll see, though, Spectre 7. The nice thing with Ray is that he has had problems with home runs all year, so that's not been a, a you know out, outlier of an occurrence. And you also know that he does usually tend to kind of settle in and have his innings. It's these bad innings that get to him. Another uh, another big bending curveball there. And uh, Eugenio is able to hold off on it. Nice job. 2-2. Two, two. We got Ty France on first. Two outs. Astros up 2 nothing here earlier in the first. Oh, I gave him a good pitch there. Suarez had a good, good meaty fastball. And uh, he just, he knocked it out and <clears throat> hit it foul. As I say, sometimes you only get one or two pitches to hit in a given line, a given at bat. Maybe sometimes only one real good pitch to hit, especially with these pitchers now. Curveball low. We'll draw the count to three and two. Uh, Epic uh, Typhlosion says, even if we lose today, we still keep our wild card spot as the White Sox are likely going to beat the Guardians. Well said, Epic. And that's the thing I think, you know, from my standpoint, I'm, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to caution, you know, some patience with it. Um, where I know people are, are, are and I, I get it, like people are, are, are chomping at the bit for this Mariner team to get to being good. And now, let's go. We've been waiting 20 years. I get it. But it's, uh, that run that we had of 14 games sets us up now to go into this back of this, uh, back of this schedule and as I've somebody else was telling me the other day you know you have I think the easiest schedule on the back end of just about anybody else in major league baseball so the the stage is set say nothing of the fact that you've got the hitters on deck to return you've got DePoto who's been a a, a mad lab type genius when it comes to making trades and you know that he's got a, a probably starter out there that he's going to look to add in if not more onto that I put that together and I go there's only for me room to optimism at that point and I, I think it's well said man that that playoff spots the spot to look at when you're a young team and you get in the playoffs and you got momentum at your back everyone will talk to us about these 
you know, big dog teams that we can't touch like this Astro squad or like the Yankee team. But once you get in the playoffs and the ebbs and flows of the season, who's hot at the right time, you never know what could happen. Especially at that point, if we get to the playoffs this year, it's to me, it's like house money. I know Mariner fans wanted us in the playoffs this year to begin things and get through this year. But this to me was the developmental year where you're really starting to kick it into gear. And next year was the part where you really put the pedal down to the floor. It's one of the reasons I thought that Depota was a little bit conservative rather than spending that money on, you know, an overpaid veteran than like a Chris Bryant, which would have been a hellacious deal for them to make. Um, say nothing of the story deal, story signing, which probably wouldn't have been a good, good signing in retrospect either. So you, uh, I, I like their process and I like where they stand right now. I'm, I'm very, uh, very encouraged, very encouraged by what we see here, Epic. So we're going to hang in. And especially, again, we're, we're down some guys today, you know. Julio's a big part of this lineup. And now moving Crawford in the line, uh, to, the, to the leadoff spot and how it moves everything kind of around, I think it does change some things. So they're going to have to kind of muddle through against, again, one of the better American League teams. At, this is happening at the kind of the worst times. I've been against not only the, one of the toughest American League teams, but a team in your own division that's leading the division that you're trying to chase. Alex says, how often do you go to Mariner games? Uh, Alex, I'm over on the east side of the state, so I don't get out to Mariner games very often right now. When I was living over in Seattle a few years back, I would usually get to at least a half a dozen games a year, if not more. I really love that park, and I just love uh, the feeling of walking. You just walking around the park to me is awesome sometimes in that, in that place. They really set it up that way nice, where it's not just one of those spots of I'm in my seat, this is where I'm going to sit. You can go and look at like all the views from around the park. It's what I really appreciate about that stadium. Oh my God, he called time, huh? He's trying to slow Robbie down. Aldemus Diaz. Space City, good to see you back in the chat. Spectre 7, I think we just need one more starting pitcher. I'm hoping a healthy lineup soon. It's a little frustrating missing your best bats. Well said. Yeah, I agree with you. And Robbie's gone 2-0 here. Seems like he's kind of struggling to find find that four seamer. It's the four seamer or the curve. He's slider. No, it's the slider. He's kind of he's kind of trying to find it a little bit. You can see him. It's it's not the feel for. It. It's not quite there at the moment. Gets him on. Gets him to swing there. Nice pitch on that black by Robbie. Um, but Alex, I probably I don't know if I'm going to get to a game this year though because being on the east side of the state, it's quite a quite a travel to get over there but I do like to go to games. Here's the wind and the delivery. Nice pitch there by Robbie. He got the slider there on that one. Inside part of the plate, drawn to a two and two count here. Robbie, to me, is a fun pitcher to really watch because he, he's not got the overpowering stuff of what you get from Kirby or Gilbert, but he does pitch with just a very smart, smart approach it seems like every time even those home runs that were hit i mean maybe those are the hot zones on those hitters but those weren't horrible pitches all right three two here robbie's messed around a little bit gets him to knock it on the ground and the mariners had a bit of a shift on there center second baseman was out of his normal spot behind the bag at second base which left a hole which allowed them to pepper that base hit on through that would be a routine ground out there if not for the fact that you've got the shift on there so we're next year that's not going to happen dragon dude i think this mariner team is the best in 20 years the mariners were third in al west for the last five years and now you guys are second this is a wild card team i agree well said i love the optimism in the chat and i i echo it i feel it and i echo it yeah i got i got that optimism too man i look at this team i feel good about it all right, Robbie's coming back at uh, two. Uh, we got McCormick up now. Throws him first pitch fastball, which he knocks back. Alex says, that's cool. Yeah, it is a beautiful stadium. It really is. I mean, you can go between innings up on the top point there and just go look out at the water, then come back down. Or you can look at the, uh, I, I mean, it's one of those ones you can even be in the outfield kind of on that walkway that goes all the way through and just kind of watch from there even a little bit and get some cool, unique angles. They did a great job with that stadium. I mean, and, and I'm, I'm a homer about it, but I think it with both uh, the Seahawks stadium and this one they did. The Seahawks stadium should be, honestly, we really should have a dome for a football team, but I do like what they did and how they constructed this. I think it's, it's one of the best in, in the major leagues. If you take out all the nostalgia stadium stuff, you know, Wrigley and 
Fenway. I think it's it's still one of the better ones. One of them, it's got its own kind of to me unique feel. All right, O2 here now on McCormick. Robbie Ray throws over to first base to keep Diaz close. Come on, Robbie, let's lock in. Nitro Hawk is training camp this week or football for football. It is indeed Wednesday, my man. We got we got uh, we will be streaming on the first day of training camp. So on the uh, Hawks Nest side of things, but uh, yep, Wednesday is the day. Here's the delivery. Knocked on the ground. Ah, oh, Tuvi just got it between the third base and the uh, shortstop there. Again, just like the first base hit a second ago, not a hard hit ball. J or not all Tuve, but McCormick. Just kind of banged, bangs it through the hole. Wow. Goodness, hit them where they ain't. That's, that's what football, baseball is. <laughs> uh... Space City is Astros. Pena is going to give a run for Julio Rodriguez, Rookie of the Year. Yeah, maybe. There's a lot of baseball left, so, you know, guys have got to still finish off. They can't rest on the laurels of what they did in the first half. But if Julio remains injured for a significant amount of time, that's going to open the door to closing that gap. Spectre 7 says, good Lord, Robbie just cannot catch a break. I know he can, man. I'm... I'm I, this isn't, he's not pitching bad to start things off here. And both of those two base hits were just seeing eye singles that were, again, that stupid, stupid, oh my God, having a shift on for the, for the right-handed hitter like that. I'm not a fan of that. I get it, but I'm not a fan of that. All right, Robbie comes out 0-1 here against Mauricio Dubon. Robbie, let's limit this damage, man. This offense is not giving you five runs today. You got to get a ground out here. Get him with that sinker. Induce him. Sinker low and away. No way. He. Oh, my God. Long run, and it's down. Oh, my God. Robbie is having some of the worst luck here to begin things I've ever seen. The Astro batter... Literally golf swinged it down at his ankles, completely out of the zone, no business, and Winker just can't get there from a coverage standpoint to get there on that ball. This is this is the issue with with. Eh. This is the thing long term to me the team's got to consider when it's looking at this outfield. This is the thing it's got to consider if thinking about a Soto trade, which I think is not likely to happen. And that's outfield defense in the stadium is so important. It is not just, yeah, defense is important. I get it. Yeah. Uh huh. But on a play like that, it's a long run, but you can see Winker's just the wheels are not there. And he's, he's struggling to get to it. He's, he's motoring as fast as his little legs can take him. But they're not taking him very far. And it's, again, when if you've got an, more of an elite or close to an elite defensive guy out there in that outfield where you're taking runs away. It's one of those hardest hardest measuring points in baseball to make at times for those kind of plays because they just get, oh, yeah, double. Goes in the sports stat column as a double, and nobody really acknowledges the fact that, yeah, that it's a long run, but the left fielder should be able to get there. But you need a guy with the – it's a lot of space out there in that outfield, and you need a guy with some legs to do it. And right now – you know, unfortunately, you know, Julio's really good out there. But I would argue, and, and here we go, Dylan Moore trying to come in, can't make the catch. It's like literally as I'm talking about this, you're watching it play out in live action. Where Dylan Moore's, it's a, it's a, again, Jesus. Robbie Ray might just have his head blow off today, like something out of scanners. Because, like, nothing is his fault right now that's happening, really. That ball's just knocked up in the air. It's coming right down, and Dylan can't make the catch. But it's exactly what I'm talking about about the last play. It's like these are the plays where it's just that goes down as a that's going to go down as a base hit, not in there, right? And uh, holy moly, this is this is rough, Alex. This hit that this hitter is related to Tiger Woods. Yeah, exactly. Tiger Woods did, man. That was a full on golf swing. Goes right up in the air. Poor Robbie. This has been a rough series. Rough series. Julio, find out Julio's a little bit not full broken, but he's a little he's he's damaged, and then uh, and then he loses the first two, and then poor Robbie's coming out and he's not pitching bad. He just can't get a freaking break right now. 
You got first and second here, nobody out. Knocked on the ground up the middle by Altuve, base hit. That's going to score one. Holy goodness. Nitro Hawks is how often will you post on this channel during football season? I'll be flipping back and forth, Nitro. The, the plan I think I'm going to go with is we're going to have the Sundays and Wednesdays live streams. We're gonna, I'm going to probably do a, a show around, I'm thinking about doing a Tuesday show around the college quarterbacks. Um, but there'll be days where I'm streaming on, you know, when there's night games at 7 o'clock on a, you know, Thursday or whatever or, or whatnot. I'll, be, I'll probably be doing a couple, a couple games a week at least once football season comes. 23 says, what else can go wrong? Like, come on. I know this is, this is a little brutal to start. This is a little bit tough. Oh, and another. Oh, and he caught it. Did he? Are they giving him the catch? Dylan almost dropped that thing too. Please tell me that they're counting that as a catch. Don't go back to the replay and it's showing him like flowing through his hands like water, please. Okay. No, it's caught, 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 caught. That's caught. And then he flicks it out, boy. This is, uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's a little touch and go right now, folks. We're just a little touch and go right now. Holy mackerel. All right. Well, it isn't out, so we'll, we'll take it. Five nothing Astros here in the second inning. One out. Robbie Ray is just really having some rough luck here. A rough go of it to begin things. Wow, man. The Astros have just had some, this is a bit, like five games worth of luck in two innings. Goodness gracious, <laughs> I'm a little speechless here. Uh, Alex, it's like we're watching the 2017 Mariners. Seriously, I mean, they got somebody up in the up in the pen, but I don't, I, if I'm, I mean, I don't know. It's been Rob's fault. They haven't hard hit anything. I mean, maybe they're just seeing him real good. I don't know. He gets a nice call by the ump there. That was probably a couple inches inside, but manages to get the call. It's all right, Rob. Chill out, man. Just chill down. You can put this, you can get this train back on the tracks. It's tough as a pitcher there to start doing a little bit too much, start letting things get into your head a bit where it's, it's been bad luck. Your, your process has been fine. Your location's all right. They've just had... They put some good swings too. I'm not. I don't want to make this seem like the Astros aren't playing playing good here, but boy, foul the way a two two. Whew. Yeah, Alex Nightmares is right. Goodness, I'm I'm <laughs> watching you going. Holy crap here! What the hell's what's going on here? Dragon Dude says, do the Mariners need batting, defense, or pitching? Uh, yeah. I think they need mostly a, another starter. I think the pitching is going to come around with the, the – the, and Robbie gets a strike out there. Big big K. Nice job by Robbie. Um, I, I would tend to think the batting uh, – pitching is where you're going to be able to most go with it. I don't know who you're going to necessarily be able to add to help really substantially defensively at this point kind of is what it is because even when Hanniger comes back he's not a defensive maestro out there in left field but he I think at least gives you more consistent hitting than you're getting out of Winker uh, at the very least you can run a lefty righty matchup between those two guys depending on what kind of starting pitching you're facing Robbie gets the first pitch swing from Bregman knocked foul so uh I'm uh I'm still coming back to thinking that starting pitching is where it's really going to be at. You're just hoping the lineup's going to improve enough with the bats coming in that's going to offset some of this stuff. You just hope. Uh, 2A3 says, hopefully we don't give up 20-plus runs like the Red Sox. Yeah, that 28-run game was kind of a brutal one, wasn't it? Eh. Eh. 
I'm, I'm, let's hope this is not the start of one of those kind of days. Come on, give the fans something here today, boys. Nice pitch there by Robbie. Gets him into one and two count. Sector seven, are we going to get blown out this bad? This really RIP raise ERA. I it, service has got to, I would ride with him for a second about him service. Make sure that this is really what you think you're seeing. This is because too many, too many kind of freakish little drops in this, in this inning. The two home runs were sort of freakish. I, there we go. Pops him up. Skies at high. Please stay playable. Damn, Mariners cannot catch a break right now. and just doesn't stay playable. <laughs> Astros have a, a damn leprechaun shoved up their butts right now. Nitro Hawk says, who do I think gets Juan Soto? It's a good question. It's a really good question. I don't think it's us. My... Uh, my feeling is it's going to be probably a National League team. Like I've heard the Cardinals. Cardinals make a lot of sense to me. And I think the Yankees are kind of a dark horse on it. Because that would be a Yankee move to make. I can see them just going that cray-cray with it. But I do think, I think just my feeling is he's going... American League team just doesn't feel quite right to me. Like, there's just not really that American League fit. All right, so we got a 3-2 count here. Two outs. Astros up 5 nothing. Runners on first and second. Robbie Ray looking uh, never the worst for the wear here as he gets set. And let's go. Gets him to pop it up. Again, the sky high. And is he going to get two lucky falls? He will in one at bat. Bregman... Just, again, adjust that leprechaun up his butt a little bit to the left and manages to have that foul ball just reach the seats. Chris Munoz says, Oh, no, we suck again. <laughs> All right, 3-2, big pitch here. Hit hard. Nice job by Eugenio Suarez to pick it. That ball was blistered, and he picked it up off the ground. Got a nice nice throw off. Gets the runner. L limits the damage. Space City, Space City says he's going to a playoff team for sure. It would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it, Space City? Like, it's the, it's the aggressive move that you... You really are not going to have a hard time selling it to your fans. I understand that everybody's saying he's going to get this haul that's beyond anything that everybody anybody has ever gotten, but I sort of maintain that that's while that's the truth, it's also like, but what fan base is going to hate on that? Usually, when you're giving up you these kind of top end prospects at the trade deadline, you're doing so for a pitch for a player that that you're getting that's over the hill or really expensive. Or, or maybe, you know, kind of just a short-term solution situation. Whereas here, you're getting a legitimate star adding to the lineup who's not you know, 23 years old. So I think that's going to open the door to a playoff team making that deal. I think to your point on that, um, Space City, as much as anything, because, you know, you, 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 how hard is it going to be to sell your fans, you know? Well, you give up all our prospects. You mean to go for it this year for the World Series and add one of the best bats in all of baseball, who's only 23? Oh, we, well, I, okay. <laughs> I think that's going to be an easy sell to, uh, to just about any fan base. Factor 7 says, Jesus, 50 pitches in two innings. Yeah, that was a brutal, brutal on Robbie there, man. I, it's just, I, I'm that, that ball that Eugenio just picked was maybe outside the home runs, the hardest two hit balls. The one ball the guy golfed, he nearly one-handed that thing into the left field corner. But as you guys hear me, and you'll hear this a lot from me in this channel when we talk, it's I, I am going to harp as we look through this this team and in the future of this team in the view of outfield defense, and and that 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 needs to carry a really big part of the weight. It does getting those 
setting the win record that you did in 2001, you know, Randy Wynn on the left, Mike Cameron in the center, and Ichiro on right. You, know, you could make an argument that, that that was as good a defensive outfield has been constructed in baseball history. I'm not talking about their hitting, just the defensive outfield those guys provided with the amount of area that they can cover. And that is something that I think should be noteworthy as far as looking into the future on this team. All right, so uh, Framber Valdez is going to come set. He's got the funnest name to say, I think, in Major League Baseball, and that's saying something. There's some fun names. Uh, Framber. Framber Valdez. Jesse Winker is going to go ahead and get set here and no doubt be super aggressive early in the count. Oh, no, he actually took a pitch. Okay, here we go, Jesse. Let's go. 1-0. 0-1, I mean. Jesse hit in 227 on the season with eight home runs and 35 RBIs. Ooh, did he swing? Managed to hold up there, one and one on a ball in the dirt. Dragon Dude says, in my fantasy league, Robbie Ray has negative 13 points. <laughs> well, you're with me then. You're probably saying, like, let him stretch him out. Keep stretching him out here. Winker hits it meekly on the ground to second. Second with a little flip play, and he go. Oh, and they collide. Oh, no. Oh, no, they collide. Winker's still on the ground. The second baseman was running up. Winker says he's all right. Second baseman was running up, used his glove, flipped his glove over to first baseman to try to make a play at the last second. First baseman could not, Grayell could not get the stretch there to get to the play. And then the momentum of the second baseman running over carried him into the line of Winker, and they collided, and it looked real bad. Winker looked awkward, not bad, but just looked awkward. They weren't going full speed, but Winker did a little spin fly move. And he kind of held his leg out for a second. You're just going, oh, did he hit with the leg? Did they collide legs at him? Oh, he twisted his foot. Twisted his foot when they collided. Boy, we're not having a great luck today. Is it a bad moon rising or what? Do we have a harvest moon? What is it? The hunter moon? What is it? I don't know what it is, but that moon's up today, I guess. Winker's got a little blood on his on his nose. He's tough. He, he was willing to fight a whole clubhouse today. He don't need no Band-Aid. He says, F your Band-Aid. He rips the Band-Aid off his face, throws it in the trainer's face, puts his helmet back on. This is baseball. This is baseball. Second baseman of the Astros says, my bad to Winker. Winker just lets the blood flow. Chews his gum. Says, I've seen worse. Nitro Hawk it says, it's funny seeing the Mariners better than the Hawks. It is kind of, kind of odd. Nice hustle there by Jesse. <laughs> oh, man. Second baseman needs to get his brakes, brakes looked at. <laughs> I okay, took 35 steps to slow down. That's what caused that collision. Oh, here comes Gabriel with the positivity. Luis Torrens uh, up to the plate now. Runner on first. Just a bit inside. 1-1. One, one. Space City, you know, says Mariners come to Houston next weekend for four-game series. I'll be there. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah, Space City. It's going to be hot in that stadium next week. That's going to be some hot games. Don't they do daytime games too at this time of year down in Houston? It's going to be a little. It's going to be a little wet. It's going to be a little wet. It's going to be good. Another good time. Hopefully, we can bounce back in that series. Oh, we got Julio back at that point. All right, so 2-1 here to Luis. A lot of people have been hoping he'd be a little bit more injected in the lineup here. As Cal Raleigh has done a lot of the catching here so far this season. Played a lot of games. Wind of the delivery. Knocked foul to the third base side. Dragon says it's, it is air-conditioned. Is the Houston Stadium air-conditioned? Oh, that's, that's awesome. Well, that makes a big difference. Space City, remember back in the old days with the old uh, Houston Stadium and how hot that would get in there at times? Like, that would do that. They did that uh, temperature reading on the field thing. It would show like 152 degrees <laughs> on the field. You'd have the sweltering, 
the sweltering lines right on the camera where it's so hot that it's, it's, it's distorting the image. Dr. Medic says trade for Juan Soto. Hey man, we need some, we need some help from, from the, these bats. If they, if they blank us again today, that's definitely big time concerning. And Luis Torrens meekly swings at a curveball that goes in under his hands. Strike out. And the ball that ends up four or five inches out of the zone inside. And he swings right over the top of it. It's going to be an impossible pitch to kind of hit if you're going to swing at it. 23 says check Mariners Twitter and they're killing Robbie. I don't, do you guys feel like that? Is this Robbie's fault? Is he pitching that bad here right now? Like, I, mean, I know he's gotten hit here a little bit, but I'm like, uh, I pitched for years back in the day. I gave up a couple home runs. I don't remember giving up any home runs where I put it, I put it at a right, right. And I put it at a right handed, right handers knees inside. That's just not their hot spot as far as a swing place. Hit hard there, right up the middle by Frazier, but right at the center fielder. The luck is tough today. It's just a tough luck day to me. You know, sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way a little bit so far. And we have some just tough luck, but. You no. Know. Well, Gabriel, I can definitely see him only scoring two runs. You're down Julio Rodriguez in this lineup. No Cal Raleigh in the lineup. Uh, Lewis is just getting back into the swing of things. Um, yeah, I, I, I can see it. All right, Dylan Moore up to the plate now with two outs. Runner on first. Oh one. Mariners just have a hard time the last couple of days this series with Houston just getting on top of counts against these pitchers. They're they're finding themselves oh one consistently over and over again, and a lot of times it's through being aggressive early on in the count. Nice pitch there by Valdez. He put that right on the black. One o oh, two. But you're just not getting on top of any of these counts, and that's going to put you in a defensive mode as a hitter, and just less likely that you're able to put a good swing on a ball. Swing and a miss by Dylan Moore. Strike three on three straight pitches. Somebody explain to me again why Dylan Moore continues to get at bats. Like Kelnick is not going to be better than what Moore is giving us right now. I don't know. RDD, I've been going to Houston Astro games since the seventies. I can't remember being hot. Uh, okay, I could be wrong in that RDD. I mean, I I re again only remember just the uh, Niehaus used to talk about it when they do day games. And they would show they would show the temperature gauges. I remember that, but I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering. Oh, not Astro games. I'm thinking of RDD. I know what it is. I'm thinking of. Okay, I'm thinking of the Rangers. That's why I'm being an idiot right now. So I'm looking like a moron to you guys. I just confused you guys with the Rangers. My bad. Whoops. Yeah, you had the Astro Dome all those years. God, what am I? What am I talking about? What am I talking about here? Sector 7 says, I keep forgetting our original starting catchers out for the year. Injuries have been kicking our butt. They have. We definitely have been harmed. I mean, now you're down Julio, no Hanniger. Uh, you've, you've had points where France has been out for a long point in the, in the lineup with the arm injury thing. Definitely haven't had the best of luck when it's come to, you know, what's been going on with your injury situation. It's hurt our lineup. It has. Yeah, I like Cal Raleigh. I mean, I don't know if he's ever going to be an average guy, but if he if he is a an upper level catcher behind the plate, who then provides you upper level you know power, um, from what you normally get from the catcher position, that can be great value to the team if you built the rest of the team up around. But I can see him rounding out eventually into being a, a two sixty guy. All right, let's see if Robbie can settle in here a little bit. A lot of pitches through the first couple of innings. Astros with uh, five runs on eight hits. Okay. Yeah, please. That's not going to work, Kitty. Thank you. Oh, God. Cat just went crazy. 
crazy with the hair. Goodness. It's so hot now, my cats are just starting to shed all over the place. Jesus. I feel like I got a coat of fur on me now. All right, Robbie. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's go, Big Rob. Let's go, Big Robbie. Big Robbie, yeah, I've got a picture. All right, so we got a 1 1 count here. I think he gets to deal with at least the bottom of the lineup through this inning. Uh, Gabriel says, when the Mariners lose 10 in a row, will you agree they are an average team? Um, will I agree when they lose 10 in a row? Maybe. I, again, I've said I don't know what this team is fully. I think they're better than average. I think they're a playoff team, Gabriel. But I've, liked, I've said that there's two months ahead in the season. You speak with such certainty. And again, I don't know if you're just trolling because every literal comment you're making is just super aggro negative in every direction you can go. And usually when I deal with that on my Seahawk channel, which I've been doing for quite a bit of time, that usually means that somebody's trying to troll and just get a reaction or, or do whatever, which I mean, good on you if that's what you're doing. It, amen to you. I, I do maintain trolling is sort of like the least least of any of the humor that anybody can intone out there being witty, uh, being smart with your things. It, it takes the least amount of brain power to be a troll, right? But if that's what you want to do, do it. Now, if you're just this negative and this hateful on the team, uh, what what did you expect? Did you did you expect a team that needed to rebuild its farm system over the last few years to be great right now? Uh, I didn't. The Astros are in the middle of their run. We're climbing to our run. You, you, you take this three-game series and speak with such certainty on what it means and what it is about this team and that this team's so bad because of it, and yet you've played a three-game series against one of the better teams in baseball, and you've not had the star of your lineup. You've not had maybe your third-best hitter in Hanniger in the lineup. Um... Lewis is just getting back from his, his concussion. If you have a healthy Lewis in this lineup, you can make an argument he's at least, what, your fifth or sixth best hitter if he's just rolling and he's able to actually just play. So, you know, what, what, what's your expectation around that? You know, I, I don't know if you're, you've had, like, shattered dreams at this point because the team's not better than what you thought they were going to be, but they're taking the right steps in the right direction in the form of constructing this team. Gabriel says, I'm not trolling, I'm just stating facts. Get your head out of your you-know-what and stop praising these bums. Yeah, see, I, I, I just don't, I don't agree with where you're at on it. I appreciate your perspective on it, Gabriel, and more power to you. But I've watched 30-odd, 35 years of baseball, and I've seen a lot of times on this team that I've checked out and said that's a bad team, and the, and the direction they're going is not the, is not the appropriate direction. Um, I've spoken to specifics to you about why it is this team doesn't emulate those past teams and the poor choices that they made. This team didn't make a trade of like moving off from an Adam Jones type. A nice, I can't quite turn the double play. Made a team moving off from Adam Jones for a trade deadline deal that was dumb. They did the same back in the day with Heath Slocum trades and signings of Robinson Cano and Richie Sexton and Adrian Beltre. You know, all these kind of moves really weren't that smart in the context of appropriately and building a team right. Now, in my opinion, DePoto's starting to build this team correctly. That's one of the reasons you got a 14-game winning streak. Those things don't just happen by happenstance. I noticed, Gabriel, that you didn't respond to my question yesterday when I asked you, if you take the last 30 years of baseball and you have teams that won 10 or more games in a season, do you think those teams, on average, ended out the tier better than average? A above 500 or below 500? I didn't quite get an answer from that on the question, but I think it's a valid question to ask and one to maybe consider as you are on this tangent of feeling so negative about this team. I appreciate all perspectives, man. And if you want to feel that way, feel that way. I don't agree with it. And it's going to take more than simple baseline points to get me to move off of that. A smart approach and a smart process does not always equivalent to production and results on the field, wins and losses. Sometimes bad luck happens. Sometimes the ball bounces in the wrong direction. Sometimes, another thing you've not mentioned on Gabriel, injury strike. And this team has been struck by injury as hard as any team in Major League Baseball this year. And despite that, they still find themselves well over 500. So,
Gabriel, I'm not saying take a take case by case. You're arguing for outlier, and you're saying that a team that wins more than 10 games, well, there's this one team that, didn't, that won more than 10 games last year, so that means if you win 10 games, it's not indicative of the fact that you're usually on average going to be a winning team by the end of the year. I asked you a specific question, which you again continue to be evasive and not answering. Take the last 30 years. Teams that have won 10 or more games in a given season. What was their record at the end of the year on average? Just, just ballpark it. And you know the truth on this one, which is why you're not answering the question on it. Double play turned by our Mariners. Great job. Another run given up by Robbie Ray in this inning, but unfortunately, uh, we're getting back behind the ball on this one. But, man, again, I appreciate your perspective on it. I'm not saying you have to think the way I think, so don't ask me to have to think the way you think. I don't agree with you. I brought up specific points to this. You, you, you speak in sort of generalities. This is another thing that I've learned of doing this for three and a half years on the football side of it when I get in debates. The, spokes that, the folks that won't speak to specifics and then just speak to one point that they keep hammering home and they stay general, and then it gets to, it, it, I know where it quickly moves from here, where it gets to insults really quickly off this. It's like a, you can predict it as far as behavior goes. But again, just I disagree with your perspective on it. I think this team's moving in the right direction, and even if we don't see it this year as this team ending up good, which I think we will, but if we don't, I don't look at that as this team's moving in the wrong direction. Well, again, Gabriel, I've asked you to answer the question five different times. I'll ask it one more time, but then I'll put, put the point down. In the last 30 years of baseball, in the Major League Baseball, teams that would have win 10 games or more in a season, which we can both agree doesn't happen on, on the often. Doesn't happen very often, does it? Not every team in baseball is reeling off a 10-game winning streak every single year. So if you took the totality and we say there's 60 teams in general terms in 30 years that have had a 10-game winning streak in 30 years. Maybe that's too high. Maybe it's 40. Do you think the vast majority of those teams ended out the year well above 500? Or do you think that those teams were bad teams on average? Or do you think that those teams were just middle of the road? I'm, I'm truly asking. I'd love to hear what the answer is. But uh, I, I notice you're not answering it. I happen to maybe think it's because you kind of know I have a point here. Mostly a team that wins 10 or more games tends to be good by the end of the season on average. So I'm playing more, I'm playing more to the odds here. You're kind of playing to more of the outlier, what happens in the rare occasion, the rare circumstance. Space City says, go Astros six. Yeah, you guys are just every, every inning putting them under siege. Tough start by Robbie. RDD says, if Seattle keeps doing what they're doing and doesn't stray, they will be a really good team. Great point, man. That's all I'm trying to say. They're on the right path right now. They don't have bad money put out the door. They've got a farm system that's restocked. They've got injured players that are going to come back, and there's no reason to not think that they can come back and be productive ball players for you. And uh, I think that that's all very encouraging for this future of this team. There's a lot of times we've had to not be, to not be encouraged by what we're seeing. So my, my little thing goes off here. But uh, I'm just not in that place right now. I feel good about I feel good about their direction. Even if, again, the results aren't there. I don't know the stats. Don't care. I'm talking about the 2022 Mariners. Average team. You don't want to admit it. Okay. I, I, I told you I disagree. It has nothing to do with admit. I, you, you're struggling to understand and hear what I'm saying, Gabriel. So I'm, I'm going to probably check out of our conversation here. If you want to have a true back and forth, let's have a back and forth. Let's have it where we're trying to, you know, actually learn each other's perspective back and forth rather than you telling me what you want me to think. I've explained my position. I've explained why I think it. I've explained why I've constructed that. I put my points pretty validly. You come back with generalities. You don't get specific. You point to a Yankees team that won more than 10 games last year than wasn't good at the end of the year. And so that then, then is a general rule of thumb. You're pointing in that direction to say this is a general rule of thumb of why this doesn't mean anything to win 10 games. I push back on that with a question I've asked six times. You have yet to answer. And you go, I don't care, I don't know. It's pertinent. It's pertinent. Because if it happens like, let's say, 80 to 90% of the time, Gabriel, that a team that wins 10 or more games ends up well above 500, then your point doesn't have very much solidity to it. Outside of, me telling, uh, outside of you telling me you've all eyeballed this team and you have such an intricate eyeball for it that you can see a team eight games, what, eight, nine games over 500, that's absolutely what you've called them crap, bad, horrible, variety of different terms I've seen you use in two days to describe them. Again, I appreciate your perspective on it. I just disagree. It's not a matter of admit. Just disagree. But back to the game. J.B. Crawford up to the plate now. Already in an 0-2 count. 
Bounces the ball over the first base side. He's hustling. Is he going to get there? No. Great play by the first baseman. Bay City says Mariners won't see Astros after next weekend. Two months to see what they got. There we go, man. And it's a building thing for us, Space. It's like if you guys were having, you know, it's like if you guys were missing Altuve and you had a Verlander coming back or a couple of your bats coming back in the lineup and you knew you were kind of just, you know, muddling through a little bit until you could get to that spot. You know, and if I thought that there was a, we weren't getting Hanniger back or there isn't reasonably Lewis can eventually lock into that DH position, I would be a little bit more pessimistic about this team. But because you have help coming on deck, because you have DePoto who showed a willingness to be active in the trade deadline, even when you weren't necessarily great, and, and usually comes out ahead on those kind of trades, God, Lee, Mariners, Mariners are just swinging at everything right now. Goodness gracious. First pitch swinging at everything, and it's just weak, meekly swings. Sucks. But I think when you put that all together and understand there's a lot of baseball left to be played after this particular bad series here with Houston, it does make you a little bit more optimistic. Again, Gabriel, just you're sticking in generalities, not getting to specifics. In your case, it's more wishful thinking that they're good in X years. I didn't say they'd be good in X years. I said they'd be good by next year. I said this year I thought there would be a developmental year. I said that in the, visual, the original video that I posted to my channel here, I said that this team's going to be up and down and people need to be patient with this team. And what you get with young teams, Gabriel, is inconsistency. You get ups, you get downs, and usually they're wide swings. But that's what you get with a young team learning how to win in baseball. Just what you get. You got a 21-year-old star on the rise. There's not a lot of reason to expect that that team is constructed as a team that's going to go out and compete with teams like the Astros and Yankees who have gone all in and have, are in the middle of their run. Teams in the middle of their run, us moving to our run. And I think that we get to that run by next year. I do. I think the final parts and pieces are added this offseason. So I didn't say X number of years. Again, I'm be, uh, I, I think I'm done on this one, Gabriel. Again, I think you struggle with we agree to disagree. That's an okay thing. I struggle to argue with you because you're not bringing up points. You're just trying to kind of cast the, cast the dispersions a little bit. So it makes it a little bit tougher. 283 says, do you think Mitch will be a DH? Do you think Mitch will be DH? Will DH be playing in the outfield when he's back? Part of me thinks that they're going to play a little bit of the matchups from lefty to righty here with what you have with Winker and, and Hanniger at that point to where now you can play a little bit of those, those matchup games if you want, especially if you're trying to bring back Hanniger a little bit slower early on you know, from the injury and to try to just take care of him and make sure that he's going to be, you know, at, at full speed, essentially by the end of, by the end of August, you're rolling with him, you know, and he's going. Um, so I think that they're going to probably switch a little bit back and forth in the field with those two guys. I would like to believe that Lewis is your long-term answer there for you at, at the DH spot. He, to me, seems like they've said they're going to try to play him some in the field, but I, I've heard kind of differing reports on what it is that's going on with that knee. And if it really is something that long-term, it makes a ton of sense for him to be playing out in the field on that knee. Uh, if it does and he can go out in the right field, we certainly could use some help out in right field. Uh, you know, Haggerty has not been horrible. He's at least, you know, played, he's at least giving you some defensive value out there. He can get on base. He can hit a little bit, but getting an impact bat out there in right field uh, could be mightily helpful. And that's what we need to do as, as we're seeing in this game. We need to add a variety of different bats to this lineup a little bit. So I, I think he would probably be doing more of a switch back and forth thing with um, Winker in left field and maybe an occasional DH if they're trying to give Lewis some time out in right field occasionally in there. And they can kind of mix those all together a little bit. Devin Martell, what's up, man? It's good to see you in the chat. Hope you're doing well. Mike uh, Can 55 at least y'all aren't the Angels. Now that team has no future. Very well said, Michael. Very well said. Yeah, there's a team that's in a, in a really struggling state right now where they've got two stars and not a lot else. I mean, we are not there. You've got a, a, young, uh, you got a young rising star in this league with MVP future potential, solid catcher behind the back, uh, solid catcher prospect who's on the rise here with his bat, in my opinion. Again, not expect him to hit ever 262. I didn't expect him to ever hit 280, 290. But as a 260 guy that can give you 30 home runs a year, 35 doubles, that, and play great defense behind the plate, that's great value. Ty France, you know what you got in the lineup out of him. Crawford, you know what you have relatively with him in the lineup. I, I like him a little bit, even at the number two spot over batting leadoff. But um, you've got stuff to work with here. You do. It's, it's not an empty cupboard. Gabriel.
Gabriel will return. <laughs> So, Gabriel, you're calling Julio Jones a sideshow act? Bro, you're definitely trolling. If you're not trolling, then you're just being completely ridiculous. <laughs> I, yeah, Spectre 7, I mean, that's he's just his trollness shows. That's good, dude. Do your thing, Gabriel. You do you, man. I never understand it. I never quite get it. But you do you. All right, the Mariners have brought out a, a man out of the pen here to get uh, a little bit of work in here. Six Tough day by Robbie Ray with the six runs. Astros were just kind of on him a little bit, but boy, there was just, just some tough swings. If you go back and watch the highlights on some of those home runs, man, it's, it's the two home runs and the ball that was hit out in the corner were all kind of below, the, right at the shin where they were hit. Jacob Kissinger says, uh, Ham Swaggerty is better than Dylan Moore. I'm with you, Jacob. I'm with you on that. Haggerty is it, it, Haggerty's a little bit like what I talk about with this defense and that outfield where it's, that's kind of the guy you'll end up maybe at times putting out in the left and right field when you're constructing a roster and you might need to find more of your power from within the infield and, and, and in, in an odd places like a second base and, and maybe even sometimes shortstop as you look into the future because having those guys in the outfield that can get around and move and cover that ground it, it's you just have, I've seen the benefit of it since we've entered that stadium so many times. And I've seen how, as we saw in this game on a couple of hits, it's a guy being a step or two short on a ball that's fallen in versus getting there with ease. And um, it, it does make a difference. It does prevent runs on the scoreboard. And it, it's a part that is an easy, it's a, it's a devalued spot, I think, to build on your team where not a lot of teams put as much onus on outfield defense with players. And if I can get a guy on the outfield who can play defense, hit for solid average, and draw his share of walks and have, have a, a patient approach at the lineup, that's kind of an archetype that I'm looking for in a left-right field for this team. Well, Gabriel, you can be sure that I'll be here, man. And I do tell the truth and I'm honest. I've had to go through tough times on my Mariner channel. I got eight, what, almost 8,000 subs over there. I've had plenty of times where we've had the team in the clean the last year that wasn't good. And I had to call it as I saw it. So you'll, you can count on me being honest on it. I'm not a, I'm not a pom-pom waver. Never have been. That's not what I do. But if I'm encouraged by what I see and I like what I see, then I'm going to say that. And if I don't, I'm going to say that as well. Like I just said, this isn't for me about this year's results as far as I'm taking a lot away from this team. I expected inconsistency this year. This is not a shock to me that a team goes up and down with a young baseball team. I've seen it my whole life through watching baseball for three decades. It's, it's a very common occurrence. It's what you get with a young team. Seahawks 12, man, do you think some of our batters should switch their batting stats? Exactly what Wink, Winker did, and he started heating up. It can get into a tricky space when you're talking about trying to move around your stance too much. This is a big problem that's, that's hounded, of course, Jared Kelnick, who every other at bat can sometimes change how he's going up. You, you really want more of a things to be locked into what they are, and, and you in your, in your base zone to me, rather than trying to make that kind of adjustment. From where I stand and, and watching this team, at least through this series, I don't think it was as much this way through their winning streak, where if you look at the winning streak and just go through the box scores, you've got them drawing six, seven walks at times in those games, showing patience. And it's the part of this team that I've, I've liked seeing that's been very different from prior Mariner teams in the past, where we've gotten the, we've gotten the one-two punch in Mariner teams in the past of they strike out a lot and then they don't draw walks in addition to it. You don't want them to have them to, to, to draw as many strikeouts, but that's, of course, a league-wide problem that we're seeing across the board a little bit. But you get the walks on the other end of it, at least you're, you're getting on base. At least you're wearing pitchers out. You're, you're making it harder on them. And what we've seen, that's been the thing missing from this series in, in, in the games we're watching is just there's no patience in any of these bats. Every Mariner is just chomping at the bit to get us to, to swing from her heels. And um, you're not getting any extra base runners on from that standpoint. So me with Seahawks 12, I, I w if I'm service, I'm coming back to them going, guys, we've got to employ more patience here. You guys are, are you're out on your front foot. You're swinging at everything. Let's, let's lock back in here a little bit and look for a spot in the zone. Look for a certain pitch. You know, the strikeouts are already there with the, with the approach that they're bringing as is it, now. Now let's, let's try to, let's try to do a little bit more 
getting back to the basics here. You got to draw the walks. You got to, otherwise pitchers are going to know you're going to swing at everything and they're going to throw things well off the zone and you're going to still swing at it as we've seen in this game. If you don't get your approach, correct. Great job by Murphy here. He closes right. He closes the door in the fourth inning. Nice. Good live arm, man. That thing comes right across. Two strikeouts in the inning. Holds down the fort as we go into the bottom of the fort. Still a lot of baseball here. This thing ain't nothing over. R Rory Alter says, uh, Julio isn't playing today. You might notice Jordan isn't either. That's true. That, that is true. Very much. But again, for us, Rory, it's, it's also a variety of different injuries we got, right? Like, we're just getting Lewis back in the lineup who's been out with a severe concussion. We were Mitch, we're missing Mitch Hanniger right now. We've also got, you know, to me, Torrens is not as good a hitter right now where Kyle Raleigh is in this lineup. You know, we're not, I'm not saying, I'm not blaming injuries. You guys are beating us. You beat us in this series. This was a big series against the Astros, and this was an opportunity for our Mariners to make a statement about where they are and where, they're, where they want to go with the back half of the schedule. So the, the Astros have taken it. Don't get me wrong on this and that I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to give just due to the Astros. Verlander pitched a monster game yesterday and look, and knocking the home runs out in this game where those are hard degree of difficulty home runs. So I will give him props. Yeah, Murphy's got that ball swinging, swinging across the, across the plate, le right to left, like nobody's business. Seahawks 12th man says J-Rod versus Jordan in a home run contest. Who's winning? I'd probably go J-Rod based on the effortless way he was knocking him out at the home run derby here uh, last week, a couple days ago. He says Alvarez out today waiting for Bradley to return ASAP. There you go. Be interesting to see, too, if the Astros are going to be one of those teams aggressive in this trade deadline with where they sit and what if they were looking to add. They jump into the jump into the fray. Okay, so we've got, we got Lewis coming back up now for his second turn here. Been a rough go here so far. First pitch, ball inside. Framber's got three innings, four Ks, worked smooth, efficiently, much like Verlander yesterday, not really being challenged. Knocked out, foul by Lewis. Here's the one on the pitch, 2-1. Dragon Dude says, uh, rough game, 8-9 eight, eight, Astros have a hit. They did it to us yesterday, too. Yeah, the bottom of that lineup. And that Astros middle of the order is too good. I mean, say nothing when they got Jordan in there. Um, it's too good to be getting back to that top of that lineup with runners on. And with Altuve especially, who's just destroyed us. I mean, hell, three. Like I said, I was referencing the other day. It's, he's, he's right behind, it feels like, um, Mike Trout and how much damage he's done to us. So certain players that just kill you for whatever reason. Just can't get him out. That guy has wore us out. Here's the line of delivery. That'll take us to 3-2. Nice job by Kyle here. Good at bat. Give me a little bit of patience. Uh, Space City, the pitch count. Oh, what is it here? You got... Uh, oh, yeah. can see. That ball is hit up the middle by Lewis. Nice job. Base hit. Here we go. I'm trying to look at the pitch count, by the way. Hold on. Is not showing me the... Uh... Oh, there we go. That's how you see it. So, 49 pitches. He's fine. He's like... Space City, he's, uh, he's right where... Uh... He's right where... Um... Verlander was yesterday. He's in that CG lane right now. That CG lane. All right, Eugenio Suarez up to the plate now. 
knocks it out foul 0 and 1 Eugenio last couple of days has just struggled to get around on that fastball I mean I'm talking middle of the plate belt high the pitcher gave him one right there and again you might not get another pitch this hole at bat I know it's the first one but if you're going to swing at that thing look in that zone go Mariners just cannot get their bats up getting this stuff put into fair play on some of these meaty pitches and quickly now 0-2 Sinker just landed right in on the inside part of the zone. That's the spot where those Astros hitters were hitting home runs earlier, and that's just kind of usually a dead zone for right-handed hitters. They like to get their hands extended. Arms extended, not hands. Beaten weakly on the ground. This is a double play ball all day, and that will be that. Goodness gracious. Mariners are just flailing right now against this Astro team. Dragon Dude says, congrats on the stream yesterday. Got 860 views. It did, man. I was, I was really encouraged. I was surprised how many people we had watching. And I figured we'd be uh, a little bit of time before we get kind of that kind of views, views on this channel. But um, uh, so update on Julio. He's day-to-day -day services optimistic. It won't require a trip to the IL and that he'll be able to play tomorrow. So update on, update on Julio Jones. He indeed, Julio Jones, Julio Rodriguez will indeed be... Uh, be back for our Mariners tomorrow. Hopefully that's good to see. But thank you, Dragon Dude. I like doing these streams, man. Baseball is such a it's different than football where you really got to, when you're doing the live stream of games, you got to stay in on the action. With this, it feels a little bit more like you can just be kind of have some conversations and discuss the sport a little bit. Discuss what's going on. In NBM, I agree right now, Astros are the better team. They are the better team. Even with us shorthanded. Right now, you guys have our number. Well, but we got two months left and we might go out and make a trade or two and we're going to add some bats to the lineup and you're going to add some bats to the lineup and then we're going to just see how this whole damn thing shakes out. Winker's almost got the four man, <laughs> almost got the four man shift. <laughs> He's got the quad shift going, folks. We got a quad on the infield. We got a quad on the right side of the infield. <laughs> oh. Inside part of the play, beat and foul on a 2-1 pitch. That's the part where people say beat the shift. It's like, okay, beat the shift. I got, I, I'm 2-0, I'm going to swing. He's got a pitch running in on my hands on the inside part of the plate. You know, the only way to get that out to left field is to inside out the ball. And yeah, good luck. Good luck on that one. Dragons use Mariners have a 90 to 80 win season, no doubt, unless a lot of injuries. Agreed. Agreed. And Winkler binks it down there to the pitcher. And Winker is definitely uh, Winker is definitely running with a little bit of a limp after that collision at first base earlier. Just a bit. Hunter Williams says, now this is the Mariners I know. <laughs> we're we're going to get dark in the chat here real soon. I'm <laughs> sensing. Seahawks 12, man, if Julio was in these games versus the Astros, he probably would have had a homer in two of the three games, though, by it. Yeah, I, he definitely helps. He definitely helps, especially yesterday, and, and his defense helps. Uh, there's a ball today that, that um, uh, Moore wasn't able to get to in the outfield that, that helped them early on get on top of us. There was a ball yesterday Moore wasn't able to get to to cut down in the gap that got to the wall, which is a play I think Julio cuts off and shuts down and prevents a run. So not just what Julio gives you with the bat, it's also what Julio gives you with the defense versus what you have out there on the field right now too. And I think that would have been benefit. Now, would it be enough to have had us win these three games? I don't know. Maybe you take one of them, maybe. But I don't know as well. There's a reason, though, that Julio's on a six-war pace, which is outstanding. And it's because he's having that kind of effect. Roy Alter says the Yankees do not want to face the Astros in October again. Maybe not. Maybe not. Does seem to, you know, there are those teams, doesn't matter the sport, there are those teams that just kind of have the numbers of other teams, and there's nothing those teams can seem to do about it. It just, they, they get dominated by them. Um, Seahawks have been doing this to the 49ers for about the last 10 years. I think the Niners have like three wins against us, and we got like 18 wins against them. And it's just, uh, it's, Sometimes it just plays that way. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Mm -hmm. 
Space Eddie says, uh, Soto the Astros. That would be depressing. That would be uh, straight up. If the Astros make that kind of trade, I mean, like, uh, yeah, we're definitely, ma we'll make some moves this year, maybe as far as trade deadline, but we'll, we'll maybe give it a year. <laughs> I, uh, we're struggling against this Astro team. Like, yeah, yeah, all that on top. Like, uh, uh, uh. Jesse Winker is such an awkward athlete, dude. Oh, he stepped on the bag weird is what happened. He didn't fully step on the bag. That wasn't even from the collision. All right, so Winker's out of the game. Another another bat down. Another bat down. Another bat down. We get the, the Dynamo Abraham Toro out there. He's got the... Uh, <laughs> Got the straw bat. This has been a tough luck day in a lot of different departments. Uh, Robbie didn't pitch as bad as, as what it is Lionel show. And uh, I'll tell you, the hitters have not done themselves. So, again, that's the part. This is a valid part of, of criticism on the hitters here is that their approach through this series has been kitty wampus. And this is where as a manager of service needs to come back in and, and go, okay, guys. We've come back off the all-star break and we're feeling ourselves and everybody's really uber aggressive right now. We need to get back into the basics here. I need some guys taking some first pitch strikes from time to time here. If you're going to swing, swing for a spot. Look for a location of it. Don't just swing to swing. Bay City says, I miss Toro in Houston. It's been a mixed bag for us here with him. He's just, he's at times... He's clutch. I'll tell you that, Space City. You need him to get a. You need him to get an out, or you need to get a, a, a hit at a key time. He'll get that. But otherwise, it's you know. It's otherwise, it's you know. Seahawks 12 man Julio is mostly the reason why the Mariners have be the best outfield in Major League, but also got to give credit to the baseman and shortstop on creating the double plays. Agreed. Agreed. I think he's a big part of that. I think once you have Sam Haggerty out there, he gives you a plus guy out there on that one side. And Moore is not bad in left field. I don't like Moore in center, but Moore in left or, or, or right isn't bad when you have him out there from a glove standpoint. His bat leaves a lot, a lot to be desired. And another strikeout by Murphy. Let's give Murphy a little bit of props here. He is, uh, he's been doing pretty good here. Inning in the third, three strikeouts. Solidly done here by Murph. Penn Murphy. And he's got a hitter here quickly 0 and 1. Quickly 0 and 1. The Mariners have managed just three hits in this ballgame. Seahawks 12th man says, wow, first Mitch and Kyle, then Ty, then Julio, now Winker. Who's next? Suarez. Team just can't stay healthy, man. Yeah. Just just bitten by the bug. And Winker, they're just, I don't, if that's if it's the base doing that. Dude, why did you step on the side of the bag? What were you worried about? <laughs> Such an awkward play. So I say today is a little bit of like a weird, weird mojo. Ooh, hard hit ball. Bre Breggy almost bombed that one. He bombed in the second deck at foul. Whew, that, was a, that was a hanging slider that he just about deposited somewhere very far into the land beyond. All right. Oh, one, two pitch to Bregman swing and a miss nasty slider went across the plate outside the batter's box on the left-handed side of the plate and Breggy was still swinging. That thing started from the, the back shoulder of Bregman and swung all the way back across the plate. Brilliant pitch by Murphy. Nasty. That pitch was just so nasty. All right, two outs here now in the top of the fifth. Another nice little slider there on the inside portion of the plate at the knees. It's always tough on these right-handed hitters when you got this guy just nearly half submarining from the side throwing sliders just like good luck I was a lefty bat 
So when you did get the face lefties, you usually got a guy that was going over the top with his delivery. You didn't get a lot of sidearm lefties. But those righties, man, you get those guys that ball starts out here, looks like when they're throwing it. It's just, it, such, it's got to be so hard mentally to stay locked in there and not open up that shoulder. Nice little pitch there. Gets it knocked to the right side, and Ty France is there ready to go. Third out of the inning. Nice job by Murph. Well done, Murph. Good job. Uh, TOA3 says, if Winker's injury is serious, do you think we see Kellenic? You got it, right, TOA3? I mean, you got to at that point. As I've maintained, you know, whether you want to run with Winker and Moore and all these guys in, like, if we're going to knock on, on Kellenic, and maybe he just comes up and hits 130 as opposed to Winker hitting 230. But I just feel like with Kelnick, you need to figure out what you got in the kid. He's either a part of the plans or he's not. And then I, I still have a hard time believing that if you're putting him in this lineup, that he's not at least e equaling what these guys are doing. They're not setting exactly high benchmarks to clear in their play, both defensively on the field or how they're hitting. I, I think it makes a lot of sense to do so, 2A3. Kino Cohen says, what the F? Robbie couldn't hold the bats under five in the first you know, it was, um, it was an odd deal. I mean, I might be on my own, on, be on a little bit of an iceberg float here and the way I look at it, but it seemed to me like he had a lot, a lot of kind of just bad luck. Uh, Astros took some really tough pitches on those first back-to-back -back home runs. Two pitches, if you watch the highlights, that are down like almost at their ankles, and they put them out. I mean, that's just phenomenal hitting by the Astros to take a tough pitch and put it in the, put it in the seats. You have a, another one where... Yeah, um, the, the Astro player hits what would be just an easy ground ball to the second base side, but the Seattle's running a, sh a shift to the left side of the field, bounces right through. You have a, a, a can of corn that drops into center where Dylan Moore can't come up. If it's Julio in the outfield, he comes up and makes that play. Kino, not able to make that play. That bounces in. You have another single bounced up through the middle by uh, Altuve, a single bounced through the side of the left field, or by the side, bounced to the left side of the diamond between your third baseman and your shortstop, just right in that little dead zone between those two guys, wasn't hit all that hard, just really, really well placed. There was a lot of tough luck on Robbie today. You know, I thought he made some pretty good pitches overall. I didn't think that his line matched what he was doing. I think the Astros came out and they were swinging the bats really well and they're seeing him really well and kudos to them. But I, I didn't think that he pitched poorly or, or that he just, he just wasn't ready to go here with it today. I, Astros did, did their part. But um, they got they got some some hits today on some real tough pitches. Two three says Kelnick can't be worse than Toro and Morrow. Laughing out loud, that's what I'm saying, man. Exactly. I mean, if these guys were out there even hitting 260, 270 and getting on base, but like I, it's a little bit of the office space situation when I look at these guys. You know, I want to have like a scene where I'm sitting at the table and I've got more and Winker's been okay at times, but just. Toro, all these guys are sitting across like, what do you do here? What is it you do here? And they just scream back at me. I'm a caught down people person. All right, we got a 1-0 count here to Luis Torrens at the bottom of the fifth. Valdez with 56 pitches and a weekly hit ball, as I have said very often today. A very weekly hit ball by Torrens to the shortstop. And that is he is thrown out. I guess Altuve made the play, sorry. Mariners just are not able to put or just not able to do much with Valdez today. You know, he's it's been not not the same type of dominance as we saw from Verlander yesterday, where Verlander was missing bats and pitching like mastercraft in his approach and, and pitch choices. Framber today has just been really good with his movement. He's staying on top of these hitters, he's going right after them. Mariners just aren't getting very good swings on the bats. Uh, King Pokemon Nation Alvarez. Yo, I sub. Thank you, King Pokemon. Appreciate you jumping aboard the crow's nest, man. Thank you so much. We'll be doing this. Uh, I will be doing this on the often. Win or lose, I, I like doing these streams. And I do think, as I said, whether it's this year or next year, we're going to be building this something here with this Mariner team. I truly do believe that. That's part of the reason that I did this channel on this side is I think they are getting things back to the, to the right, right front. There's more work to be done. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But uh, I am going to continue to caution a, approach, a, a, a patient approach. All right, Adam Frazier's drawn a 3-0 count here. Let's see if we can draw a, a rare walk today. Not one Mariner in this lineup has drawn a walk. And he takes a fastball in the outside corner. Strike one. 
Mark Thurston says, good luck to dull trolls. You know who you are. <laughs> uh, Seahawks 12th man. Imagine if it's Upton that's giving us the bad luck. Maybe. I mean, maybe. He was here for the winning streak, though, so it can't be that necessarily. I don't think Upton has a lot left to, to give you, though. All right, 3-2 pitch now on Frazier. Here's the delivery, the wind. Swing and a miss. Ball up in the zone, right there in the middle of the plate. It's going to be tough for him. You know, you got a lefty-lefty matchup. It's hard for lefties, like I was saying. You don't see a lot of lefties as a left-handed hitter, but Valdez put that ball right up in the middle of the plate, 83 miles an hour. And um, maybe he was just looking for, maybe he was just looking fastball there, I guess. Boy, a lot of a lot of meek swings today. I'd say yesterday Verlander was getting the he was throwing the overpowered stuff, and you were seeing guys swing from their heels. Today you're seeing guys out in front, mistiming things, not quite, not quite on the pitch. And Dylan Moore draws a 2-0 count here to begin things. Factor seven says, I know it's been the same story for 21 years, but next year could be special. Hopefully, enter the year with a healthy roster. That's, uh, that's where I stand with it, man. And it's, you know, you'll have a very clear picture about who's a part of this, who's a part of this thing going forward. As I've maintained, you know, your center fielder's set, your shortstop set. I think you feel relatively okay with Eugenio in the short term. Maybe down the road, you look to add to that. And if there's maybe a, a dynamic third baseman you can add where you can package in a Eugenio to get an upgrade there this offseason while putting, while putting prospects together, that's, that's maybe a pathway to go down too. I'm not anti that. that. That's an approach they can look. But at least you feel okay relatively solid about that. Good about the catcher position. You got some of your, you've got at least your three starters moving forward that you know what you got in. And you, so you just got to kind of figure out your back half of your, of your rotation as we move forward. Um, I do think Lewis eventually does settle into DH for you. So that's going to leave you right field, left field, second base. You, you like first, obviously, with where you're at with France. I mean, and that's if you target those and you hit those in a way to really look to upgrade them over the course of not just maybe up to this trade deadline, but the off season, then yeah, there's no reason why this team isn't not just a team that's good at that point, but they can be a team that's that's one of the best in baseball. That's one of those better teams in the American League. It does take, like I say, a lot of work, but it's, it's not as much work as we've been looking at in 2014 or 2015. And Dylan Moore, nice piece of hitting there. Nice piece of hitting. Inside out's a ball there. Right in on the hands and manages to, to knock a nice little solid solid single out there right field. Jack Huffman says, Astro fan here. Here because I can't find the game on local TV. It's stupid. So laughing out loud, hit that like button. Well, thank you, Jack. We got a couple of folks in here from uh, Astro, uh, Astro Nation. Is that what it is? There's, there's always a name, you know, with a given fan base. So I want to get that right. But uh, thanks for jumping on in here. I'll try to... I'll, I'll try to provide you some riveting play-by-play uh, -play here. Your Astro team today has had some, some real good swings, and um, this overall series, you guys have played some dynamic baseball. Dynamic baseball. All right, so Sam Haggerty comes up, and he first, he first shows bunt, and it's a strike, and then he doesn't try to – I never get why the hitters do that. If you're going to show bunt like that and you're trying to bunt for a base hit and it's a strike, then bunt the damn thing especially on a, on a breaking pitch like that. Another slow curveball just off the plate, one and one. Kino says, thought today was the best day to take Seattle. Yeah, it was a tough one today. All right, good eye by Haggerty there. That looked like a, was that a slider or was that a sinker? What was that? Curveball. Okay, it was his curveball. His curveball sometimes gets some of that, Valdez, it gets a little bit of that horizontal movement to it. It's not as much 10 to 6. It's more of like a, it's more like an 11 to 3, 330. <laughs> it's effective. All right, 2-1 pitch here to Haggerty. Comes in with a fastball. Nice. Oh, he gets the benefit of the call. Pitch tracker had it a couple inches inside off the plate, and the ump gives it to him. It's a good pitch. Boy, when you're, when you're having a hard day in the lineup, man, you just you don't want – just come on up. Give us <laughs> – come on. Don't help him. All right, 2-2 two -two pitch here. 
Dylan Moore with the lead on first. Swing and a miss. Nasty curveball gets him. That will retire the side. He's been doing it all day with that curve, man. That curve is just as eating those right-handed hitters up. They can't do anything with it. It ends up down at their feet, and they just swing right over the top of it over and over again. Sector 7 says, if you do this regularly, you could get really good numbers. There's a huge lack of Mariner content on YouTube, and nobody is covering live games from what I've seen. I agree with you, man. Very much agree with you. I plan on doing this. I'm going to be doing this on the regular as much as I possibly can. So uh, you guys count on getting to see a lot of me with this. But uh, I think it's also good. It's, it, it gets me to allows me to keep doing this throughout the year, Spectre 7. You know, we get into football season. I do this hot and heavy over on my Hawks Nest side of things. And uh, and then you got kind of these dead zone periods here with football and, you know, where you get into May and June, July. And I, I certainly would like to maybe do a little bit more of getting into baseball at that time, talk a little bit more on that side of things and keep keep the momentum kind of going. And I do love the Mariners, man. Baseball is my original love. You know, I played more baseball throughout my time growing up than I did football. So I was a, uh, I was a junk, I was a, I was a pitcher without very much velocity, but they, I was known as the junk man. That was my nickname because <laughs> I threw every pitch under God's green earth, like literally every pitch. Cause I had no, vol I had no velocity. It was ridiculous. I could go out there and run all the time and try to strengthen things up. And I just could not get could not get any RPMs up on that fastball, but I had a, I had a 10 to six curveball. Dear God, that thing would start way up here and end up down here. I could control it any which way, but loose, but never had the velocity. Dave Lee says, as like, as like their history indicates, the Mariners simply do not know how to finish. As their history indicates, the Mariners simply do not know how to finish. I don't know what you mean, David. Can you expand on what you mean by that? Not quite sure on what you mean. Bear with me, folks. Be right back. A little more coffee. We have a nice catch to start things off. Great little catch there off the beginning of off the beginning jump. So what's interesting is that you see on this play, I believe that's Haggerty out there that makes that play in left field coming all the way across. Kind of a common theme that I talked about today when we looked at this this game in a couple moments where you wondered if there's a little bit better outfield defense, guys a little more fleeter of foot if they're going to get to certain balls. And you have a ball there hit there to start things off that's in that same corner as the earlier ball hit in this game that ended up going for a ground rule double. It almost lands in exactly the same spot. And you see the difference between having, you know, Winker out there, who's, I'm not going to go say full on liability from a left field standpoint, but you've got at least a plus, glove, a plus glove with Haggerty out there. And rather than that ball now going for a double, that's just an out. 
And that's, it's again why I say as we look to the future of this team and properly building the outfield up in the way you need to build it, you've got to value outfield defense. It's a big part of what can make this team at its best. All right, here's the give now, 2-1. Down a little bit low to Chaz McCormick. McCormick's uh, one for two here in this game. In fact, I think it was McCormick that hit that ball down in the... Uh... No, it wasn't. It was uh, Dubon. McCormick's had a very good series here against the Mariners, and he does draw a walk here. It's been very solid for you guys in the series. I feel like he's kind of wore us out from the bottom of the lineup. He's been sort of the... Astro fire starter here for them against this Mariners in this series. Sector seven says, seems like my prediction was right. Ray needed better luck today to keep the team in it, to keep the team in it. This lineup is cold, ice cold, man. They're walking up there and they're literally like, <laughs> they suddenly little, little ice shelves develop around them. Nice curve ball there. On the outside part of the plate. Probably a little bit off the plate, but got the benefit of the call. Oh, no, he didn't get the benefit of the call. It was 1-0. The umpire made it look like a strike. Dubon up at the plate now. Fouled off. A little change up. I'll draw the count to 1-1. One one. Runner on first. Astros up 6 nothing. Sector 7 says, seems like my prediction was right. Ray Oh, sorry, I read that. Uh, Seahawks 12th man says, not Robbie's fault. No, nah, it's not his fault today. I'm still pro Robbie. I'm still, uh, I'm, I'm, all aboard, I'm still all aboard the Robbie train. I don't expect him to be one of the dominant barters in baseball, but if he can slide in through the course of this contract, at least the first couple of years, and be a, st a solid number two in there, say nothing if Kirby rounds into an ace-like type player like Gilbert has become, then you've got him in a number three role, and that's a damn fine number three. So, uh, you know, he's overall been to me exactly what we thought he was probably going to be when we signed him from the Blue Jays. This is the reason you're not paying Scherzer-like prices for this guy to bring him in, and it's only a four-year deal and not a five- or six-year deal, and uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. First pitch swinging by Maldonado. Boy, Maldonado does like to he, – he's not a big taker of the pitches, is he? He's, he's – not the most patient man in his approach. He is going up there to, he's going to Vladimir Guerrero this, you know what I mean? If you bounce that thing and it's going to be back in the zone, he might swing at it. Oh, and one here to Martin. Oof, nice pitch. Right inside at the knees, 87 miles an hour there. Probably another, that's another change up. Four-seamer. God, his four-seamer goes to 87. You better live on the black at that speed. 0-2 to Martin. Hit right directly at the third baseman, Eugenio Suarez, for the final out of the inning. Nice job there in relief. David Lee says, uh, after he said that their industry and the kids simply do not know how to finish, uh, they start out, a, start out with great promise, but then they come up against Astros or Yankees. Granted, the Astros are excellent ball team, but come on, man, at least one out of three. David, do you feel like, though, do you factor in any of this, though, that you're missing, you know, a guy that's not only been the star of your lineup, the, the top of your lineup, the, one of the biggest pieces on your team during this, this, this run of these games? Um, I mean, that's got to factor in just a little bit to it. I feel like, and I'm not trying to put it all on that. I'm with you in that I would have liked to have come out of this with a game or two more. But I feel like just taking, we got to remember there's a 162 game season, right? And so this is a bad three game series. You've won your share of games against the Astros this year. I mean, they haven't completely just dominated you end to end. And we very well, well fine. Don't get me wrong. Your point may stand that we may come to the end of the year and find that the Yankees and Astros are out of our league for this year. We weren't up in their realm of being able to even compete with them. We may find that. I'm, I'm, I, I can acknowledge that that is absolutely a possibility. But I also dare say, Dave, unlike those teams in the past that you speak to and compare it to on those Mariner teams that faded in, into the past after having very strong starts, the one difference here is you've got so much help coming back and help that you can feel optimistic about. It's, it's a, there's a reason to look at this glass and say it's half full. Lewis is going to come back, and to me at the very least, he's a guy hitting 270 in this lineup when he's back in his role and, just, and he's comfortable and he's actually playing day in and day out. 270 is going to give you power. 
And that's, that's so much better than what you're getting right now from the DH spot. That's light years beyond what you're getting from the DH spot. Hanniger comes back and I think can hit from a similar vein. When he's been on the field, he has hit. So he comes out there and he gives you that out of left field, which is you're not getting anywhere near that out of left field right now. You're getting like 240 with like slightly below league average power out of left field with poor defense. So there's another reason to feel positive about that with that coming back into the into the flow of things. Um, say nothing again of Jared Kelnick coming back in here. Um, Julio's going to be back into this lineup. You know, you're 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 down some down some guys, and you're going to get those guys back. And again, there's also this other part with this David where there's another trade to probably be made, if not two, before we get to the trade deadline here. Depoto is one of the most active general managers in the sport. I don't think that he's just done and he's just going to sit with his team and let, let it be as it is. I think the whole time through, even from the start of the year, DePoto had a very much an eye on looking towards the trade deadline and making a deal at that time and a pretty major deal. I'm not talking necessarily Soto, but something that's going to be a significant addition to this ball club. And I will continue to, to, to sit in that, in that lane of believing that that's, that's kind of the plan in place. So it's, I get where you're coming from and that has, you're right, that has been a common occurrence with your Mariners over recent years of them fading after starting out hot or or getting through a good run, but I don't think that that's necessarily what this is. All right, we got Crawford up now with a 1-1 count. Valdez still working here into the seventh, bottom of the sixth inning. He's been very efficient with his pitches. 77 for the game. Astros up 6-0 here. See if uh, Ty can start things off here. Get this uh, ball rolling. Already down 1-2. You know you're getting that nasty curve here from, from Vas- Vasquez, so just be ready for it. Here comes the curve. Knocks it up in the air. Easy peasy. Out. It's hard. It's hard to hit those curves, especially when you got him able to throw it for strikes whenever he wants to throw it for strikes. Sector 7 says it's a Serzer fan. I would love to have him, laughing out loud. Oh, well, he's a great pitcher. I mean, they're, it's not a great contract he's in, I would say. The contract they gave him to be spending the money, they're going to spend it on him when he's 38, 39 years old. But what he's been historically is, is uh, what he's been historically has been pretty impressive. And I would have loved to have had him on our staff. I love his intensity. There's a video out there calling him the psycho of psycho of baseball. I don't care. I like those. I like those baseball players. Like Randy was like this. That are just those sort of. They got that junkyard dog mentality. You know that you don't know if they're trying to pitch to you or they want to fight you. I like that. I like that in my starting pitching. I want a little bit of intimidation. All right, Ty France up now. One zero count after the flyout by Crawford. Vasquez comes set with a wind to the delivery. France gets. Nice barrel on the ball, but just knocks it foul into the seats. Jack Huffman says, game is not over. Yankees are not on Astros level. Very well could be right on that, Jack. Very well. I just think that the, I, I, what I'm saying with that, Jack, is just that Yankees and Astros are the two teams, I think, that are at, right now the top in the American League. I think they've, they've somewhat separated themselves, at least marginally, from the rest of the pack. And you guys might be well above them, but there is at least a, a difference there. And Ty France bangs a... Real hard hit single right between third base and uh, the shortstop for a base hit. Nice piece of hitting by France. Does a great job of getting the barrel on the ball consistently. But I, I'm with you on that. I don't, I don't have a, a definitive opinion on you know that with, with that, Jack. But I can see the Astros, look, they've, somebody was saying above, they've had the Yankees numbers historically, and that stuff does tend to carry on through. There's not been a big change in the matchups at this point. It's still kind of same personnel and same personnel that caused those that, that caused those results prior. All right. Seattle might have their best opportunity to make some noise here. Weak, weak swing by Lewis. Just just flails at the ball. Don't know what he was looking at, but 94 mile an hour fastball right right past him. And if you're gonna swing, man, first pitch. Like swing. <laughs> oh one here. Hit high up into the air, lofted. Center field's got a read on this, and he makes the catch. Boy, Lewis has definitely looked rough since coming back from this injury. He is not, you know, I'm sure he's over it, but he's, he's got to get some of the rust knocked off here a little bit. Seahawks 12 minutes. It would be nice if JP could start hitting home runs. 
That would be helpful. Somebody could start hitting home runs. 23 says JP isn't really a power hitter, but it would be nice if he could draw a walk or just get on base since he's, he's batting number one. Well, he did get on. He did a good job there. Suarez swings right through that, that curve. Suarez is having a hard time with Valdez's curveball today. And, and Suarez knows it. He's going to pinpoint this curveball watch on the inside portion of the knees. And, he, and especially now ahead in the count. Yep. Bam. Right there. I told you. Yep. He's, he's, got, he's got Eugenio right now to where Eugenio cannot get a read on that, on that, on that spot. And it's gonna, he's going to come right back there to Eugenio. This is going to be inside off the plate, I bet, unless they're looking to just try to surprise him like a fastball. But if I was him, I'd make him prove he can hit this thing with the curve in. Yep, right back in. Bam, strike three. It's a curve. What do you think you're going to get, Eugenio? What do you think you're going to get? It's, and, and, and the third curveball they threw him was the, the, the easiest one to hit. He actually ended up kind of hanging the curveball on the third strike, but Eugenio just wanted no part of it. He's like, I'll make you throw for a strike. Crazy. If I'm any pitcher in major league right now, I'm throwing left. I'm throwing Eugenio curveballs all day because he looks like he's got no chance on that. Jack says, nice to see the Mariners playing better than 500 ball. Our division needs it. I agree, man. I'd like to see us be able to at least give you guys at least, at least push you a little bit, you know, at least make you uncomfortable. You know, let's not give you the slip and slide to the division title here, to the pennant. And I agree with you, GA 2A3. JP is really not as much a power hitter. He's, he's got his stroke is too level. You know, those level stroke guys are going to tend to just have more of the double single, you know, they're just going to, they're going to hit for higher average, but you need more of those guys in the lineup. Frankly, you got too many already guys that do the, I'm going to hit two two thirty and hit 30 home runs like Suarez right, and strike out all the time. GOC says throws before hose. <laughs> Sector 7 says, as is Mariner tradition in bad blowout games, who do you think hits the garbage time home run of the ninth? I'm guessing Suarez. I am too, because he's looked the most overmatched today at the plate. So it only makes sense that uh, it's him or Lewis probably that ends up putting one in the seats here before this thing's over with. Alex Heineck says, what are the chances the Mariners score six? I think Jack's 10% is probably being pretty, pretty beneficial. I mean, let's remember Jack. Valdez is rolling, and he's only throwing 86 pitches. I guess your only hope is that maybe you can get in the bullpen in the eighth before you get to the closer. That is the only hope. And then we do one of those magical Mariner things where we, we score eight runs in one inning. And everyone's baseball is like, oh, my God, they scored eight runs in one inning. It's amazing. Mariners are magical. And no, no one will be talking about the series at that point. <laughs> See how 12th man says, we need one run, bro. Come on, men's. Yeah, let's go, guys. Altuve hits it high up into the air. Moore gets up underneath it on the warning track. I, I have said it once, I'll say it again. It's it's amazing how much power Altuve can generate from his little five foot. What is he, Jack, five six? I don't think I've ever seen a guy at five six that can generate the kind of power that Altuve can. Spectre 7 says, remember the comeback against the Padres in 2018? Bring back Day Ho. Dayo, give me that Dayo magic. Jack says it ain't over till it's over. That's right, Jack. You never know, man. I mean, there's we got nine outs left. If we can hold down these these mighty bats for three innings, you never know. But boy, I'll tell you this, Jack. It's uh, and watching these couple games, it's it's definitely not been a. Uh, you've not been really pushing them. You know what I mean? Oh damn, dude. The Ortiz shot. Do you guys see his left arm and that shot on the telecast that they're showing with? Uh, is that from when he got shot? Why well, he's got all he's got like all the zipper. He's got like a ton of zipper looking scars on him. Did is that when he got the shot in what was it Puerto Rico or something? Oof. That looked gnarly. Base said he says five percent. Two eight three says zero <laughs> percent. Alex says one. <laughs> Well, Jack, you were being pretty optimistic, I guess, compared to where the chat's at on it. 
All right, Jeremy Pena up at the plate now with one man down, one two count on Pena. Astros trying to add on a one or two. You got to figure Pena's probably put, trying to put one in the seats here if he swings. Ball, two and two. Change up down the dirt. Here's the one delivery. Weekly hit there out to second. Tough play. He's able to make it. Very, very nicely done there by Toro. Had to come running in. The, you got to put a little bit of mustard on that throw to first base to make the play. Just got him in time. So a quick two outs here for the Astros as we get to Tucker. Up the plate. Jack says Astros are in a rare groove that teams sometimes get into. Rare groove. They are, dude. They're definitely, this series, they've, they've looked ready coming off this All-Star break. They took that rest. They came back, and they're, they're hitting on all facets. You get the starting pitching from the Astros with this lineup like they got in this series. Like, it makes them pretty damn dominant. Oh, one pitch here. Tucker, the line delivery. Just a gnarly pitch to a lefty on lefty there gnarly pitch that sinker is just that sinker's got some curve motion to it all right oh two pitch yeah they tried to give him to bite a little bit further outside after getting it on the after nibble in the corner i like that that's a great oh two pitch rory alters his astro starting pitching is unreal it is verlander's just a, i i don't even know what to say watching that guy 39 years old doing what he did like I said, yesterday was an absolute master class in starting pitching. Setting hitters up, the way he used the curveball, operating fearlessly from the top of the zone over the middle of the plate. All right, Tucker's gotten this to 2-2 now. Here's the wind the delivery. Knocks it out of bounds. Knocks it uh, foul, out of bounds. Sector 7 says that this is fun. Without your commentary, this game's a lot more boring. That's, all, that's what I hope I can eventually here provide. I'm going to try to keep getting better at this, too. And the Bears have literally six players on the right side of the diamond here on their shift. They do not think Tucker has any ability to hit to the left side. 2-2 two, two pitch. Swung. Battered foul. These shifts are getting super aggro extreme, aren't they? These shifts are getting angry. They like it's an angry shift when you're putting five guys on one side of the on the field like that. All right, two-two pitch here by Tucker. Wide a delivery, swing and a miss. Got him at the bottom out of the zone. That had to be a change there, right? No, that was just, he brought out the slider. Nice little mixing of pitches there. It was mainly slider, but he. Good job there with that. The slider and the change there were working really well between the two. Kind of going back and forth between those. Great job by the bullpen today by this Mariner team. Robbie certainly had a tough start, but you've, your Mariner bullpen has turned in four innings of no-run baseball against an Astro lineup that uh, has been doing pretty good the last couple days. So good, good on the bullpen here to kind of hold it down, give this lineup a chance. See if our Mariners got anything left on deck here so they can answer the answer the tub. Very kind of you to say those, Factor 7. Thank you so much, man. Space City says, Strohs take two to three against the A's this week. I, you, I can see you guys sweeping the A's with where they're at. I mean, how good you guys are playing right now. Jack says, when McCullers comes back in the rotation, we could have a seven-man rotation. It's nice to have two because then you're able to, especially if you guys get out in front of this division and you're not pressed by us on the other side of it, it's going to give you the opportunity at that point to then rest a guy like Verlander through a couple of starts at the end of the season. You know, he, he doesn't have as maybe as many innings at the end of the day on that 39 year old arm. And uh, you've got him then fresh for the playoffs, which is a scary proposition. So Hector seven says your live commentary is great. In my opinion should be in the booth. So you can show pictures of yourself like Dave Sims. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> he 
Yeah. <laughs> it's true. There's a random picture shot. Like, here's me with David Ortiz. It's like, okay. That zipper on David Ortiz's arm is brutal, though. Brutal. But I appreciate it, Spectre 7. Hope they make this a little bit better. Easier experience. Okay, look, we got Valdez now. Let's work this guy a little bit. You're the third time, what, well, third time through the rotation here. Taro's coming up to the plate. Terenz, Frazier. Can, can Cal Raleigh pinch hit for Torrens? I guess you don't want to do that because you got lefty there. That's why you had Torrens probably start this game is you had the lefty-righty thing. So you wouldn't do that. Jack says, the heck with the Yankees. I want revenge on the Braves in the World Series. Oh, what is that? Braves going to get back there, man? They're good. They are good. They legitimately could get back, but. Yeah, Dodds. I think I'm Spectre 7 on this. It, it feels like a Dodger World Series season again. Feels like they're going to be back in there. And a Dodger Astro Series, I just does seem kind of. I could see it. That's a very, that's, that to me makes a lot of sense. Oh, I forgot he's a switch hitter. That's right. I spaced that out to 8 3. Thank you. Cal Raleigh is a switch hitter. My bad. Wasn't he like much worse from the right side though than he is in the lefty? Or it's just that he bats mainly lefty because you're usually facing righties. Totally spaced that out. All right, Toro up now. Valdez set to wind and work. Valdez with 88 pitches in this game, so he's still got a little bit of room left to go. Comes out with a fastball, kind of explodes a little bit high on him there. Framber's gone, uh, Framber Valdez has gone six innings, seven strikeouts, only five hits. No walks. He has been pinpoint with his control. The wide, the delivery, 2-0. and oh. Nice job here, Toro. All right, now let's not bail him out now 2-0. and oh. Stay patient. Make this kid, he's worked his own well. He hasn't walked anybody today yet, but let's, let's try to work this. Let's try to get ourselves on base. We need runners here more than we need big hits at this point. The wide, the delivery, a little low, 3-0. and oh. I don't think Valdez has come out yet today and gone three and zero to one hitter. Maybe he had one guy that he did. He worked himself back in that one. The wine, the delivery, and that is down low as well. Valdez looking at the footing a little bit, like maybe he was not kind of landing where he wanted to land. And that will draw a walk by Toro. Here we go. Where are my rally caps? Devin Martel says ten dollars super chat. Excellent. Ah, uh, just get me back on the Seahawks side, Devin. It's all good, man. When we get to 1,000 subs, you'll be able to donate. But until that time, it's, it's all good. It's for the love of the sport, as they say. Mark Abercorn, what's up, Mark? My guy, my mod from Hawks Nest says, hey, y'all, when, when is the trade deadline? Go Mariners. Doing better, but was sick last night. Bad chicken. I had some bad food the other this week, too, man, that put me down for about a day and a half. God, it was horrible. But uh, I think you got the, th was it 3rd of August, I believe, is the uh, trade deadline. Swing and a miss by Luis Torrens coming out. Just So Luis Torrens saw the previous hitter draw a walk on four pitches, and he came out and said, hold my beer, and first pitch swings out of a ball thrown very far out of the zone. Again, you can control your approach as a hitter. You can control what you do walking up the plate, and, and, and you've got to know the situation, and you've got to understand what's happened in front of you. Free swinging like that, it, it's just you're hitting 219 on the season, Luis. What are we doing? Almost bit again on the very same pitch, but was managed to hold up. It'll draw a 1-1 count. Spectre says, and says I'm, dry, I'm drinking a rally beer. A rally beer, rally cap, it all works towards the same thing. It all, it all goes to the same energy. Roy Alter says, Verlander said he felt great yesterday. He's getting stronger, hitting 100 on some pitches. Oh, the, one of the most, to me, one of the most impressive things from yesterday's game with Verlander, which I'll get to here just after this pitch, 1-1 one, one pitch here to Torrens. 95 mile an hour fastball at the knees inside. Just looks at it. One, two. Trends like a lot of hitters in this lineup. Just every at bat seems like he's in a one, two, one, two count every single time. Every single time. All right. So Valdez comes set here. One, two. Toro's on first. Nobody out. 
The line to delivery, swing and a miss on a curveball right over the top of it. As he has done all day, Valdez just finding a way to pump that curveball under the fists of the Mariner right-handed batters. The thing just comes right up over the top. He gets him to swing up over the top, and it ends up landing about a foot and a half off of where their swing actually is at, completely just fooling the hell out of these Mariners hitters on the right side. You usually got a little bit of an advantage, you think, when you got a righty-lefty matchup. But Valdez has been able to dominate those matchups today. All right. Adam Frazier steps up to the plate and takes a first pitch. Was that a changeup he threw him on the first pitch? That looked like a changeup, 84 miles an hour. He looks at it. Gonna come back with that hook here, Frazier. And he does. Frazier gets up on top of it, gets a little underneath it, sends it out to right field. Easy catch for him. Two outs. Jack says Mariners do look good, though. Need one real ace, and fireworks will happen. I agree. I think that's the place, Jack, they're going to target, too, is over a hitter. I think they are going to go for a starting pitcher above all else, um, if only because of the George Kirby pitch count thing that you're operating on, I think. Um, but also, Rory, in regards to your point on that with hitting 100 yesterday, you know, the, watching Verlander, he works through the first five, six innings. He's hitting about 95 on the gun. And then he starts to get a little bit in trouble. And suddenly you're watching the gun go to 99. You know, and, and to me that you're, he sits in that back pocket and one out to Dylan Moore with the curveball just missed off the plate. He's sitting in the back pocket with that ability to rev up those RPMs whenever he needs it. And he can be dominant through six innings without having it. And the fact that a 39-year-old could find those extra RPMs after he's worked through six innings in the middle of a summer day, uh, just I thought that was as impressive as anything else. And Moore hits a hard shot that finds its way through between the third baseman and the shortstop for a base hit. We've got two runners on. But I, Ver, Verlander doing that to me, I was, I was in awe of. Because you know that, that having that in your back pocket to whip out to those hitters, that have, they've got you timed up, they've got you ready, you've gone through a couple times in the lineup, and now here I come through on the third time in the lineup and suddenly you're getting three, four miles an hour more in your fastball. That's significant. It is. It, 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 it's like earthquakes when they start talking about the – you increase the level. It's, oh, it's a 4.0. It's a 5.0. It's 6. .0. Well, you're going from 95 to 99 on a gun or even 100. That is a, a big difference to a, to a batter in the speed that it's coming at him at. Jack says, I'm drinking Guinness. Guinness is a good choice, Jack. It's a good choice. Can't drink a lot of Guinnesses. That stuff will fill you up. Uh, Sector 7 says, I would love to add one more starting pitcher in this offseason, and I could see us putting together a deal to get Soto if he isn't traded until the offseason. That's a great point on that, Sector 7. The Astros very well may be under no, under or not the Astros, but the, uh, the Nationals may not be under any kind of feeling like they've got to move him right now, and that they may, because they could get exactly probably the same package this offseason, maybe even a better package this offseason than what they're going to be able to get at the trade deadline. And if that's the case, then maybe there's a little bit more of an opening, I think, for the Mariners to potentially get him. Because I think if you're talking about trade deadline deal with Soto, I think the Mariners are not going to do that kind of move. First pitch here to Sam Haggerty is low and inside for 1-0. Jack says, would Seattle pay the high amount to get Soto? I don't think that they would. I don't think that they would. I think there's going to be another team out there that looks at him as a building block, and Seattle already feels like they got a building block and Julio to build around. Ball is hit up into the gap. That's going to get down, folks. Haggerty knocked it. It's going to make it to the wall. Around third is Toro. And in on the plate. Here we go. Woo! Let's go. Dylan Moore slides in. A triple. A triple for Sam Haggerty. He just put that one where they weren't. Stuck that ball out in the gap and let those wheels fly, brother, fly. Nice hit. All right, let's go. Ham Haggerty's right. It's not Sam Haggerty, it's Ham Haggerty. It's double H, it ain't triple H, it's double H. Let's go, Sam. Easy triple, stand-up triple. Didn't, di didn't hit it on a line or a rocket, just found that open hole in the outfield defense and the ball went to a rolling. 
like those golf shots you hit down the middle of the fairway and you knock it only about 200 yards, but then it's got this forward spin going and it just keeps on sailing on down the middle of that fairway and you get another 100 yards off of it. It's kind of how it looked on that play. Eric uh, Tysflosion says, we're on the board, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Vector's got the Samuel Adams. Got a little Guinness, little Sam Adams. All right, all right. All right, JP's up now, and this is going to be a tough one for JP. He struggled a little bit like Eugenio has on the other side of it with that big overarching curveball today from Valdez. Valdez is obviously a little bit with the walk here early on this inning. Maybe getting a little bit, a little bit tired here. You know, I know he hasn't pitched a ton of pitches, but this is a hot summer day here in Seattle. Maybe a little bit, a little bit worn down. Good, good opening pitch. Again, hits that curveball right on the outside corner first pitch. And I know JP's probably sitting there trying to get locked into maybe a fastball first pitch on that. Understandable. You've had a hard time with it. Second pitch in. Hard hit. Fair. Fair down the line. JP's hit it hard right past the first baseman. It's on the line. JP's spinning around first base. He's going to make his way to get two. Woo! Let's go, baby! Woo! That's another score for the Mariners. The rally caps are working. The rally beer's working. Whatever you're drinking out there, it's making things happen, folks. Crawford gets that curveball, hangs just a little bit. One of the few balls, one of the few curveballs that Valdez has thrown today that's hung, hung up just a little bit over the middle of the plate. Crawford does a great job of getting the barrel around the bat. Just nice work there, keeping it inside the line, hitting it on a drive. Shows him the gold teeth, gives him the double guns to the clubhouse. Let's go. Let's go. Seahawks 12th man, I'm underage to drink, but get all the beer out. Yeah, just, uh, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're drinking, man, pop. <laughs> I'm drinking coffee, so I'm sober enough. Jack Huffman, how hot? <sighs> Shoot, it's got to be, I don't, have, I don't have the numbers here, Jack, but we've got to be sitting, we're, we're due to be getting up in the hundreds over here on the east side of the state, which means they're in the 90s. And the thing about that, Jack, is I've always said when you're in the west, western side of the state and it gets up to 90, 95, 100 degrees, it just feels so much more hot, like the trees take in all that heat and then they reverberate the heat back and it just feels even hotter than that. Now they are down near the water there, but it's just a different kind of, you know, you got your, you got your humid heat and your, your dry heats. It's a weirder, unusual Pacific Northwest kind of heat because we're not really built to have those kind of hot of summer days. We're usually set up to be like 75 and it feels really warm. But when you get to that point, you're about around, it's gotta be around 90, then, uh, you know, Jack Buffman, how hot? Yeah, so I think I think probably about ninety. Jack says I maintain the ten percent. Well, your ten percent's looking bracket. Everybody else was at zero. You were ten. I thought we we're shooting high, but actually looking okay on that. Nice part of this too is you're back to the you're back to the top of the lineup now. You're back to France, who's got a couple hits on the day. Lewis has got a hit on the day. Suarez, who's thankfully by this point can have. The other Suarez out of this lineup so he can stop flailing. So maybe he'll have a chance. 283 says, where was this all day? I think Suarez is, I, I think Suarez w wore down a little bit. That opening batter where you're struggling, seeing him just struggle to find the strike zone on four straight pitches. Um, that's That to me is a little bit of a, of a sign there where you can see him just kind of, you lose the feel a little bit hot, kind of long, it's, it's gotten to be a little bit of a long day, your third time through the order. Your, your, your curveball, they've gotten a little bit used to maybe looking at it. You're not getting as many maybe bad swings at that point. But he just it looked a little bit like he wasn't able to get as pinpoint as he was with those curveballs early on. And, I mean, just he lived all day with that curveball in at the knees on the inside part of the plate on those right-handed batters. And that is a, a devastating pitch for a lefty to be successful with against righties because of the fact right-handed right -handed batters always usually have a natural advantage on the lefty-righty matchup from a pitcher's standpoint. But uh, he... He pitched great today. You can't take anything away from Framber Valdez. Six and two-thirds innings, three earned runs, uh, only one walk, eight strikeouts. He worked very efficiently. Um, the kid looked really good for them. I think he had another back-to-back -back quality starts he's put together there for you guys. And not that much. He's been good all the way through. But, um, again, just part of what makes that rotation so tough for the Astros. All right, we get Seth Martinez, one of the Astros' middle stoppers of their pen coming in now. Guy with about a buck and a half ERA here on the season. Ty France steps in, 1-0, or, or not 1-0, but 0-0. Uh, and France hits the first pitch back, 0-1. France had a little bit of a fastball there right in. Couldn't quite do anything with it on that play. 
Jack says, if Seattle scores another run uh, right here, I'm at 33%. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, Ty France hitting 357 with runners in scoring position this year. Three home runs, 37 RBIs. So he has been pretty clutch. Here's the 0-1 delivery. Swing and a miss, 92-mile-an-hour fastball. Had some nice late run off the plate there. France just couldn't. He was, he was real close on it, but just didn't take into account that late run. O2. Here's the wine, the delivery. Hi. Ty doesn't take the cheese. Good job, Ty. One and two. Wait, what are you getting you getting here? Is he gonna is he gonna throw a fastball here to you now again? On a one two pitch. Slow. It was indeed look like a Sinker there, actually. Two and two. Nice at bat by France here. Runner on second, two outs. Astros up six to three. France wiggles the bat a little bit. Gets himself comfy. Step in, fights off a tough pitch on the hands on the black on the inside part of the plate. You ain't going to do nothing with that pitch. Just fight it off. It's close enough. You got to swing. Just get, get it fought off. Good job by Ty. Very good job. 2-2 two, two now. France two for three in this game. Pitcher comes set. Another real tough pitch, 93 miles an hour, right at the knees on the outside corner. Not far outside part of the plate, but the outer half of the plate. He knocks it foul. Love that pitch. That's a great sinker there. That's a sinker that's got that, not only, again, does it have the where it's falling off, but it's also giving you some side mo movement to it as well. Martinez comes set. His delivery. Fouled off again, and France had a good pitch to hit there. That was a 93-mile-an-hour fastball up in, the, up in the plate, up in the middle of the zone. He kind of... Kind of flexes his hand. He knows that he had an opportunity there with that pitch, and he just missed it. All right, 2-2. Two, two. France wiggles that bat. Wine delivery. Swing and a miss. Looks like he hit him with the slider there. Oh, that's a sinker. He's got a sinker with some movement to it. And France just swung past it. He had that previous pitch that was up a little bit high. That was the pitch to do something with. That was, as I say, that one pitch you get in a lineup to do something with. And uh, he just fouled it off. That pitch number seven there that you see on the heat tracker. As you can see, that pitch is right there, middle of the plate. That was where, you know, he wanted to do something with it. That's where you need to do it. But a nice inning by our Mariners. They didn't just roll over and show their belly in this game. Bottom of the lineup comes through for you big, get you three runs. Does get you within the distance now where it's not quite so far away. You still got two innings left. Let's see, see what happens here. Uh, Sector 7 says, I love Ty. So glad he was an all-star. Deserved. Very much deserved. I love him as a building piece in this lineup too, where you you maybe will have your share of guys that are your slugger type guys in this lineup from, from Julio is going to give you average, I think, too. But, you know, Julio and, and maybe Eugenio moving forward and Lewis and... Um, what we got with Hanniger in this line. Hanniger's a little bit more in the France mold of things where he's going to give you good, good average with occasional power. But we need more of these guys hitting around in that 300 level of things. Table setters. You know, guys like him, they can give you a little bit of power, but it's, I'm not getting that, that, that fall off shelf-like thing where it's, you know, a guy like Eugenio, where it's like, dude, he's hitting 236 right now. You know, that's, that's really not going to get it done in Major League level. I know it's more commonplace in today's baseball game, but... Got to get more guys a little bit more on, on base there. Spectre 7 says, uh, here's a good drinking game. Anytime Sim shows a picture of himself and anytime Goldie has a voice crack. <laughs> Seahawks 12th man says, France was fighting off pitches. pitches. Wish we could have walked. He put a good, good, good at bat in. He did. He just missed a couple of those pitches in there too. So 
it was a it was a solid at bat on his part. Uh, Martinez put some great pitches in there on his location wise. That's one of why he's one of the stoppers in the pen there for those Astros. True Texan says we are 99 with high heat humidity here in Houston. Yeah, I mean, you guys definitely get hotter there. That's for sure. First pitch swinging inside the base. That's a double right out the gate for the Astros here to begin things. Tough, tough bullpen there on that. Boy, just smacks it right down the line of scrimmage. Bregman does. Nice piece of hitting by Bregman to begin things. When the Astros, that's another key difference between the Astros and Mariners in this series. When the Astros have swung early in counts and been aggressive, and I'm talking OO, I'm first pitch swinging. They're first pitch swinging with an idea of where they're looking for the pitch to be at. And, and, and you can see that plan by where they just, how good a contact they're putting on the ball. They're not getting surprised by that first pitch. And uh, that's the approach you want to take if you're going to first pitch swing, as opposed to just, is it in the zone or not? I'm going to hit it. And which is a little bit of times what it looked like with the Mariner batters today at times. All right. So runner on second now. Strike one here to Yuli Guerrero. Guerrero. I can't see his last name. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Astro fans. Uh, <laughs> Yuri hitting 237 with seven home runs on the year. Here's the one on the delivery. Meekly hit up in the air. This will keep. Bregman of Toro almost dropped that ball, but it does keep Bregman at second base for out number one. Nice beach of hitting there. Let's go. Let's go. 2A3 says, why is Malone back out there? Because <coughs> they had to get into their bullpen a little bit early today. So I'm guessing that Service is trying to stretch out who he can stretch out because he knows he's still got to go two more, you know, he's got another inning he's got to pull from the pen and he already kind of has gone to the pen a decent amount in this series. All right, one out. The ball's a little high on Diaz. Diaz, two for three today. Mark Thurston says, I've got a quicker hook than service. This game would be tied up if I were managing today. Very well could have been if you, you you were definitely saying that early on before you'd given up the additional three runs uh, being Robbie Ray. Yet, and still, it's a good thing I'm not laughing out loud. Yeah, I'm sure he's better at than both of us on that at the end of the day with it. But that doesn't stop me from armchair quarterbacking it, I'll tell you that. All right, we got 2-0 pitch here now. Another low pitch, 3-0. and Boy, I would say it'd be almost okay to let let Diaz get first here, set up the double play, but you got McCormick batting behind him. McCormick has kind of wore out the Mariners pitching staff here a bit this uh, this series. Uh, Spectre Seven says I've been I've seen some compelling arguments about Cal being a huge part of our pitcher's success. I have to agree. It's you've got to factor it in as a, a as huge is the way to put it. A, a, a catcher's ability behind the plate, calling the game, not just calling the game, but how he frames, how he sets up behind the plate. Pitchers like certain catchers in the way they just set up, and just in the in the way that they just, it's weird, but pitchers, that's why you have certain pitchers throughout history, especially the star pitchers that would have sometimes their own catcher that would play on just days they pitch, you know, like aces and whatnot, because having a guy that's really good in that aspect naturally back there and how he controls the pitching staff <coughs> is so beneficial. I mean, it's even when he comes out and talks to the pitchers at times and he just chooses the right moments to get out there and, and say, okay, what's going on? Settle down here a little bit. But he's, he's fantastic to me behind the plate. And one of the reasons why I say, even if he's a guy that's not looking to be a guy on the top end of as a player, we got a 3-2 pitch here now with a guy on second. The line delivery outside does draw the walk, Diaz. Um, but that, that's a part where, yeah, his bat matters and you want a catcher that can hit. But when they look at it and go, okay, the only thing he's not necessarily going to be able to give us is maybe high batting average. He'll be able to give us power. He'll be able to give us a great glove behind the plate. Um, that's going to have a lot, tremendous value for us, I think, going forward. Even if he's not the 280, 290, 300 type hitter guy. Mass Fest is working up uh, in the Mariner bullpen right now. Service comes out to talk to Malone. Says, all right, man, look, I tried to trust you here this inning. You know, you're drawing walks here now. I got McCormick, Dubon, and Maldonado up here. We don't want to get to the top lineup this inning, buddy. Okay? Get in gear. All right? 
Get your ass in gear here. I didn't bring you out here to suck. <laughs> 283 says, I just really want to see Andres Munoz throw 102. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun when they're hitting the, the triple digits on the radar. True Texan says, a good catcher runs the game for a team. Exactly. You know, you'd love to have the guy that can go out there and do it all and, and be the five-tool guy as a catcher by the plate. But, like, look, let's face it. You know, you're usually going to get a couple of deficiencies with this guy, with these guys, right? They're usually going to be a little slow because they got those creaky knees. But, and, and it's not absurd that they don't always hit for good average. Like, that's a common thing you do see. But if you give me that great defense and you give me excellent power from the position, I'm going to forgive some of those things because those other items are more important to me for a catcher, for the catching position. All right, 1-0. And boy, right now Malone is just having a really hard time finding the, finding the plate. Six straight pitches here of balls. He's just kind of, and this is a scary pitch, right? Guy McCormick that's hurt you. You're in a hitter's count right now. You just groove one in here and it's going to be trouble maybe. He comes set. 2-0 pitch. Bregman gets his lead. Strike. Come on. Oh, I squeezed him on the zone. He put it right on the edge. Right on the corner. Right on the bottom inside corner of the strike zone. And or the outside inside, outside bottom of the back strike zone and just didn't get the call by the ump. Brutal. The pitch, pitch monitor showed it is in the zone. There he goes. Pumps in a fastball, 87 miles an hour. Nice job. All right, 3-1. Malone's, Malone's put up 41 pitches here. That's a... Quite a bit on him. Make him hit. Oh, and that's ball. Four, just, again, getting a little too nibbly on the plate. Just can't, can't get it in on the plate. Yikes. Two walks this inning from Malone, and he's just, sometimes those pitchers will just lose the strike zone. They just can't find it, and Service is going to come out there and make a change. Goodness gracious. Bases loaded. Uh-oh is right. That's a big uh-oh. And Seattle's going to make a call to the pen. Make a call to the pen. Interesting. Interesting. All right. One second, folks. Okay. 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 Victor Seven says I'm actually okay with Festa. I think Festa can do it here. You got a good bullpen on this team. Something we haven't talked a little bit about with this Mariner squad is that it's another part to feel optimistic about them moving forward. Is that the bullpen is, even as evidenced by today, um, it's been pretty pretty lock solid this year. Uh, True Jackson says, you always hate to see a good pitcher not able to get the strikes you know he can throw. Strikes you know he can throw. Yeah, it does make it tough. And, and, and it's always a little rougher when you watch the team and they're scuttling a little bit and you just can't quite get a call or two that you're looking to get, you know, as you're, as you're trying to find yourself. It's, it's a brutal spot. But they were, they were close pitches, man. They were right there on that zone. And if you're, out, if you're on 3-0 and and you gotta, you're going to have to give up a little bit more of the plate, even if you don't want to. God, oh, what a beautiful day there in Seattle today. They're just showing an awesome shot here. People just hanging out at Edgar's Cantina, I think, out there, or the bar out there in center field. Seahawks 12 bands says Matt Festa has improved from two months ago. He has. Yeah, he's been, he's been pretty consistently solid here as of, as of recent. I like, I like what he's bringing to the table. We need a double play grounder. I wonder if Mariners are going to bring up the infield on this. 
You would think probably so, right? Like it would make a lot of sense. But then you might also just be trust, trust in the double play. So Festa comes in here in 28 games. He's got a 3-5-1 ERA. Opponents hitting 183 off of him. 25 innings of work, 39 strikeouts, 7 walks. So almost, uh, almost averaging... Averaging a 2-1K two, two on that. Here we go, folks. Here we go. Best to come set. Bases loaded. Cormick at plate. Hit up high into the air. Skied into the infield. Toro struggling to see it. Struggling, struggling. Moro comes up and grabs it. Oh, my goodness. That got much harder than it had to be. Ball hit as high up into the air as a ball can be hit. Toro just could not find it. Sunglasses weren't helping him. He's got the cool sunglasses. I guess those don't work that well. Dylan's got to come in and make a basket catch last minute running up. Still too shallow to be able to score the runner from third base. Fantastic job by Festa. Spectre 7 says, I'm so done with Toro. I'm so done. <laughs> He's had a couple of rough moments out there even today. I'm I'm kind of with you on that. I've I have seen a a bit of enough of Abraham. All right, Martin Maldonado up at the plate now. The ninth hitter in the Astros lineup. Hit 166 with 10 home runs on the year. Nice little slider there. Inside part of the plate. Strike one. Jack says, I need a grand slam. Space Age says, let's go, Maldi. No, no, no. This is where we this is where we gotta break your hearts. Has to come set. Oh, one delivery to Maldonado. Maldonado hits it up in the air high. The ball's skied. Mariners are running in. That ball's gonna drop. Boy, oh boy, isn't that just the isn't that just the story of this game today? It's it's been ball after ball that has just found open hole and open spot in the field. This thing wasn't hit with any sort of velocity, hit just right up in the air. We just saw it on the previous pitch with this previous play with Toro and uh, the right fielder having to come up and save his took us at the end. It's just no one in the, no one's there. It's just, it's that dead zone of the outfield. I don't know why you've got your center fielder shaded to the right side there. But that, uh, that, that'll do it on that for folks. 8-3. And boy, just like that's that's what exactly kind of what was happening with Robbie Ray earlier a bit. Where just things the hole the ball just sometimes finds the holes. And it's better to be sometimes a little bit lucky than good. And Maldonado there skies that one up. I'll tell you if I'm Festa there, I know you've got I, I know you've got bases loaded situation, but Maldonado showed a very high propensity throughout this series to be swinging out of balls out of the zone. Rather than give him something meaty in the zone, I would have tried to get him to start to swing outside of it on that a little bit more. And Altuve is in there now, hard hit to Crawford, who makes the play, throws it into Toro at second base, but the damage is done. The Astros go up 8-3 to three here. Gosh, it's a tough game, though, today. Stuff just falling in for the Astros, man. Falling in. I can, I can point to about five or six hits in this game the Rastros have had that weren't hard hit balls that just trickled through a hole or found the place where the defender wasn't. Sector 7 says, this is what it feels like to be a 49er fan from 2000 to 2020, I guess. <laughs> I suppose so. I do suppose so. It's a little bit like that. Seahawks 12th man says, bring back April, May Toro when he would actually come clutch. I know. Why do you have on a guy like Maldonado there who's a real pull hitter? Why would you have your center fielder shaded that rather than, because if he's shaded to the left there, then he can come in and feasibly maybe make a play on that ball. But he's running, they were showing the overhead shot there. And it was like he was running all the way from kind of a little bit from right field. Jack, I bet it's good to be an Astros fan, especially after this series. You guys should feel pretty good about where you're at and where you're going here this year. True Texan says your three runs was the cause because the ball found a place where Astros are not. That's a good point. 
That's a good point. That's valid. We haven't exactly been stinging the ball either on the other side of things. Yeah, the brooms are coming out. Looks like. Looks like. Unfortunately. Uh, Mark says, I, uh, Mark Thurston says, I think they think they're making a statement, but I believe in the heart of this team, we'll see them in Houston, hopefully at full strength as well. That'd be nice to see get a couple, get a couple more guys back in there ready to roll. But yeah, this ain't over yet. This ain't over yet. Houston got Houston fans in the chat. This ain't over yet. We ain't done yet. We ain't dead yet. He just has such a dumb lucky hit by Maldonado. Hey, the thing, thing just fell in and found its place. Someone else said above. That is baseball a little bit. Drew Jackson says, would love a closer game, though. More thrilling. Agreed. Would have been nice if we could have kept these a little bit closer through these last couple of games. Jeez, this umpire is giving him some calls. That thing looked three inches off the plate on Lewis, and they give him a strike call on that slider. That's, that zone's widening up just a little bit. I think I'm just trying to get home. All right, here's the wine delivery on Kyle. Outside, that ball was in the same spot this time. The ump calls it a ball. Okay. Goyo Falcon Astros are simply the best team in baseball. Love them or hate them, they are the best. Definitely right there, man. Definitely right there. Got to give them the props, man. They're they're a great team, and they've been here for a while. They've been doing this for a while. We're trying to get there. We're trying to find the the secret sauce, the recipe, to to get to where they've arrived at, and we're we're finding our way. One two pitch here to Lewis inside for a ball. Nice eye by Lewis there. Almost, almost, almost got tricked. Swinging a pitch he shouldn't. Knocked back there by Lewis. Nice job of finding it off. 283 says Munoz hasn't given up a run in the last 17 starts. Why isn't he pitched once this series? Probably a, more of your high leverage guy. And you just didn't have real high leverage situations that you you, you, were, you were kind of down in all of these games. And he's a guy you more probably want to bring in when you're trying to, you know, close a game out through the back end to get to the closer. So it's uh, you're probably trying to keep him from those circumstances. Certain managers have situations that they'll try out. They're upper level guys like that. They're true stopper type guys like that. Like you saw with um, Martinez here with the Astros. You know, you work them in these kind of situations specifically. Here's the why and the delivery, and this is another uh, another great at bat here by Kyle Lewis. He's had a kind of some bad at bats today. This is a good. He's had a, has a hit on the day, but this is a real nice one to get this stretched into a three-two count. And he's doing a better job in this game, and that's ball four. Great job by Lewis to draw the opening walk there. That's what you need as base runners. Fought off some tough pitches. They drew back foul to get himself on base, but these are more of the, the like the bat you've seen here on this one, or the one we saw with even France where he did strike out. At least you're, you're, you're fighting stuff off. You're working the count. Again, it's not just you're swinging from your heels a little bit. Chris Flexen takes the mound tomorrow at 6.30 for our Mariners going up against Glenn Otto. Eugenio Suarez up to bat now. Eugenio has had one tough day swinging the bat, which you also maybe say he's due. And he hits it out meekly out to the shortstop who tries to makes the catch. Tries to go get Lewis back at first base, one out. Ugh. Well, Eugenio. When, when Eugenio's on and the swing's right, it's a thing of beauty, and he can just crush some balls. But when, when the swing is off and his timing is off, <clears throat> he, can, he can have some real weak swings. Sector 7 says we need to put the series behind us. Agreed. Agreed. Tony says without cheating, of course. <laughs> Seahawks 12 man doesn't seem real that Suarez has the most home runs since 2018, but leads the major leagues in strikeouts. That's it's the feast or famine, right? He's that is, the guy back when I was growing up that used to be like this in major league baseball. That was synonymous with this kind of play was it was Rob. You guys remember Rob Deere for you old heads. Rob Deere was like this where he would just, it was either strikeout or home run. And that's all you were getting. And, and it would be, it wasn't a Mariner. I think he's a brewer for most of his years. Toro's got it to 1-1 now. 
Juan de Bat Toro was able to draw a walk here. But uh, Suarez is built, uh, built cut from the same kind of cloth. He has a, it's all feast or famine. Drew Jackson says, I hope you all find the secret sauce. Well, if there's anybody that can appreciate sauce, it's a Texan. So, uh, you know, you know why we need it, why we're in, why we're looking for it. Toro, the ball, two and one now. And why'd you guys wait till the seventh inning to start putting together quality at bats? Like everything through the first six innings is first pitch swinging on tough ass curveballs flying out of the zone. And now they're starting to be a little more patient. Ooh, Toros gets a ride into that ball. That might just carry folks. That ball is gone. Home run by Abraham Toro. Somebody was asking for him to become more clutch in the chat. They said, I need me some more of that May clutchy kind of Abraham Toro. Well, he said, I hear you. I hear you, fam. How about this? Oh, you want to get rid of me? Oh, 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 Crow's Nest, you want me gone? Why don't you take that? Why don't you take that? Why don't you take an exit velocity of 99.9 miles an hour? Why not at 100? Because I wanted to stay 999. It just looks that much more cleaner. This is what happens. I, I speak about just before that pitch about drawing more quality at bats. And, and that's the part you can control as a major leaguer and putting yourself in good positions. Don't, don't swing at bad balls. Don't get early and aggressive. If a pitcher isn't necessarily just pounding the zone on those first pitches and he's trying to get you to swing at stuff off the plate and not, not there. But um, fantastic job of getting into a hitter's count by Abraham Toro. The, the two places I always say that you got to be careful on with it, with, and it's weird because it's an opposite thing between left-handed hitters and right-handed hitters. With left-handed hitters, you do not want to miss inside and low. They have a natural, usual uppercut swing and, and just the way that they usually swing, which will cause that to be the danger zone on, on left-handed hitters. With right-handed hitters, it's actually odd that it's actually usually out over the plate on the out, like kind of the outside inner to the outside portion of the plate where that's where you don't want to leave like a fastball because that's where they're usually going to wear you out on. And that pitcher just put that right in the right in the hard spot for uh, a left-handed hitter, and uh, Toro did something with it. Great job, Toro. That's right, Mark. Let's go. Let's go. And 12th man, that was you, man. You called it. Se Sector 7 says, I, re I switched to an IPA and we hit a two-run homer. Rally Bear. It was the IPA was the whole key the whole time. We never knew. We never knew. Yeah, if we only still had them at six. <laughs> All right, Carlos Santana's coming up to pitch hint here. I like this call by uh, Stugat Service. Luis Torrens has been weak sauce all day long at the plate. So let's get somebody out that's at least a bit of a threat. Santana, of course, hit a home run yesterday. You get your lefty-righty matchup here. Hitting 217 on the season with nine home runs in 71 games. 1-0 is the count. Martinez comes set with a wind of delivery. Another, another pass ball that just kind of explodes a little too high. 2-0. Here we go again. Quality of bats being put together here by this uh, Mariner team late in this game. Not swinging at bad, bad stuff like being patient. Astros running the uber shift right now. Bregman's almost playing second base with the entirety of the rest of the infield over on the right side. Here's the pitch and delivery. Oh, he gets it, lets it ride, and just draws it foul. Santana, Santana was looking for that meaty pitch. He just got a little bit out in front of it. Is that a, that's hard to do. I don't know, 92, 90, 90, about 93 mile an hour fastball just got a little out ahead of it. But he was looking for that pitch in that location. 2-1 now. Santana calls time, steps out. Martinez taking a little bit of too, too long. All right, Martinez with the trade and delivery. Inside, great eye here. What an awesome at bat by Santana. 3-1. Can't forget here, you're down by three runs. You're being brought into pinch hit, but a walk here is, all, is very good. We ain't winning this game on a home run. We got to get some runs. Line delivery, 3-1. Inside, great eye. He's hearing me. He's hearing me. He draws the walk. Fantastic at bat. A good collection of bats at bats being stacked together by this Mariner team after a large collection of early at bats in this game that were, were rugged. And uh, the Astros, Baker's seen enough. Dusty, Dusty's 
going to go dust off the pen and uh, get himself another pitcher out there. Martinez came in real solid for the Astros, just uh, couldn't quite hold it together a little bit. Kind of like Shades of Malone on the other side of the on the other side of the hill there for our Mariners. Drew Texan says we need to throw out all the rally beer. <laughs> oh my goodness. Goya Falcon, historically the Mariners and Astros have made some great trades with each other. They have, actually. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of odd too that you get the divisions trading interdivisionally like that. That's just an oddity more often than not. Goyo Falcon asks, where do I think Soto will end up? It feels like a kind of trade that I'm hearing the Cardinals kind of as an early maybe front runner to go make that deal. That that one feels right to me. Um, it does make it harder to predict on this because they're predicting this to be like the all-time best haul that, that a team's ever gotten for a player because of where he is in his career and whatnot. And if that's the case, it does it does add into a lot of different other factors into it beyond just the team that wants him the most. It could be as much what team has the best farm pieces to offer outside of which is the team that's the the de jure team to go make the trade for him. But the Cardinals could make some sense to me. I think when you look at the National League just is the team, I see a team in the National League making that move for him because that seems like the league where there's a team that they could make a move for Soto to put themselves up with the upper level teams out in the National League this season. And and that one extra move could help you out. But I think it's a wide open right now. I think there's, a, when they say there's eight or nine teams that have shown interest, I think it makes it a lot harder, Goyo, to uh, narrow it down on which one's going to be the one to dump up there. I do think that the Mariners are not going to be the team to where we're at right now, especially coming off this series. I just don't think it's it's going to happen. 2A3 says, I'm watching for free on MLB TV. Does MLB TV play all the local Seattle Mariner games on there? I thought I tried that. And it says I was out of area when I tried it. Of course, maybe it's that way in Spokane. I don't know. I had to, I had to do the FUBU thing, FUBO ding and today, watch it. AJ asked, do I think we could sign Trey Turner? I don't think so. And you have the money to do it, AJ. I mean, you do, if there's one thing you have right now, it's, it's, you know, money to spend because you really didn't, you, you were going to think you were going to put a deal or add a deal on at the start of the year that you didn't really add. Now, maybe they added a little bit of salary with the Winker and Eugenio deals, but I don't think that their budget has pushed them out to where they don't have a little bit of room to make a signing. I think they're going to want to go a little bit bigger splash than that. All right, Rafael Montero up here pitching now. And gets a quick early swing by Adam Frazier. Tried to hold up, but just couldn't quite through through the zone. Frazier today is 0 for 3. He's left two runners on base, and he has one strikeout. So a bit of a tough day for Frazier. Now, obviously, a little bit of that's that lefty matchup he's been facing on. He gets now the righty out there. Swings and knocks it high up into the air. That ball will sky up into the sun. Center fielder is there to make a play. Two men out. Steve Cattarella says, so since the Mims gave Graveman away to the Astros for a bag of chips last season, I say they return the favor this year and trade Winker and Sheffield for a Jordan Alvarez. <laughs> I'm not saying no. I'm not saying no. All right, Dylan Moore steps up to the plate. Moore's had actually a pretty good pretty good day today. Two for two for three. He's been solid. Takes a first pitch strike at the knees. 2A3, you're supposed to tell Jack that the, the 2A3, 1, 2A is some, is some uh, you know, pure mathematical number or something of science. All right, here's the 0-1 delivery. Inside, and it hits more. He looks like he's okay. Takes it, shrugs it off well. Thought it might have got him up on the elbow a little bit. Just a tiny bit, but he's okay. Tying runner steps to the plate. Could the Mariners do the impossible? Could they do the miraculous? Could they do the insane and come back in this game when so many have pronounced them dead? We shall see. There is only one man in these moments you can call upon. Only one hero that we can name. And he goes by the name Ham. 
Ham Haggerty steps up to the plate. One for three today, including lacing that base clearing triple on the last at bat. He gets the nice lefty righty matchup here. Come on, Sammy. First pitch, right down the middle of the plate, 97 mile an hour fastball for a strike. Come on, Ham. Come on. Let's get Porky with it. Let's get Porky with it, Mr. Ham. How do you like your bacon? I like my bacon crispy. Come on, Ham. 0-1. Montero set, looking back at second base. With the delivery. Swing and a miss. Another 97-mile-an-hour flame ball run right past him. 0-2. All right, get defensive, Ham. Get defensive. Shorten up that swing. Here we go. Ooh, another 97 mile an hour gets out of his hand a little early there. Climbs up high in the zone for a ball. Haggerty in now, one and two. Not looking very comfortable right now. Keeps adjusting his hands. Slowly getting himself into his set there. Here's the wind, the delivery. Swing and a miss. Gets him to swing at a 97 mile an hour fastball up out of the zone. Strike three and the rally is dead. 23 says I'll change my name to a ham. Ham wag, wham hag, waggerty if he hit hell, homer. <laughs> uh, well, he took a couple homer swings. Those early, early two strikes, he definitely was swinging for, he wasn't trying to lace a single out there. He was looking to put something in the seats. So, well, they've at least made this interesting through the end of this game. You got one more inning left. Top of the lineup will come back in the ninth. So, uh, now the Astros are going to try it out there, their closer. We're going to see how that goes. We'll be right back. One, one sec. Groundskeepers are out, fluffing up the infield, making it nice. And somebody was asking for Andres Munoz. You got him. Asking you shall receive. It's Munoz time. It's Andres Munoz time. Jack Huffman says Mets and Dodgers will be a wild playoff games. Yeah, they will. He's got, he's got the Braves in there too. I think, I think it's going to be as fun a playoff. We, we legitimately have good playoff teams across the board, Jack. You know what I mean? This year, like w with what you'll have with the division winners and even I think what, like if Mariners are wild card and what you got in the National League as well. I think it's rather than it's being like that, that final wild card team gets in that just kind of lucked their way in. I feel like this year you really have some legitimately good teams in there. It'll make it fun to watch. 
First pitch by Munoz is a ball a little bit away, and the Astros are working through the middle of their lineup here today through this inning, just like the Mariners will at, at the top. Pena, Tucker, and Breggy. Breggy time. Steve Cottrell, is, there, is this where we throw out Brash to walk a couple of guys before we throw a real relief guy out there? <laughs> Hopefully not. It looks like not. <laughs> and Munoz pumps in a strike. Nice job, Munoz. Yeah, I'm sure they could bring out Julio for a pinch hit if they needed to in this game right now for the, for the, the deal. Though, I don't know no, if you might have with that Haggerty. Though, the problem is, is that they've also worked through already some guys in this game, right? You've already pinch hit. So you've had to move things around a little bit because Winker's out. So you are a little bit short unless you can get Julio. I don't know. Probably doesn't matter by the ninth inning. So they can, they, you can come out there and probably do it. They might be just trying to just give him full rest, though. All right, one-two one, pitch here by Munoz. Ooh, 101 mile an hour fastball at the top of the zone. He almost gets Pena to swing. That one was close. That ball is, it's 101. You just don't have any time to react as a hitter. You got to decide very early on if you're going to swing. All right, 2-2 two -two pitch here. Munoz comes set. 102 mile an hour right in the middle of the plate and Pena just manages to fight it off. That's impressive. Just to fight that thing off is okay. Two, two delivery. Good or bad here by Pena. Another good job on his part. Munoz threw him a nasty little slider, 91 off of 102, and he managed to fight that thing off into the back. Houston staying locked in here. Julio comes set here, 2-2. Two -two. Delivery, a little outside, 92 miles an hour. Hitch got away from him just a bit. Just a little bit. Munoz has got a big, big wad of chew up in the front side of his mouth. I feel like he'd kind of talk like he's from the south right now if he spoke. When I made that chew up in his mouth. Munoz comes set. The delivery. Swing and a miss. Got him on the slider. Dead center, middle of the plate. Great movement on that. Uh, am I reading? Steve Cottrell says, am I reading correctly? Does that say Cal is coming up to replace Lewis? Just why? Um, I don't know why that is that way. Because you have, I don't know why it's showing that way. That doesn't seem right. Because what you did is you just had Santana pinch hit for Terenz. So you have, you don't have Cal Raleigh here playing. Like I think Raleigh's, Raleigh's back there as the backstop right now. So I don't, he's not DHing. I think that's just they're wrong on the deal and how they put that. All right, hit ball tucked in and around the right side by Tucker. Make it one and one here. Okay, I guess that makes sense then. So wow, okay, we're going. Well, no Lewis then next inning. We're gonna get Cal out there. Seems odd the way that worked, but that sounds right. That does sound right. Sector seven, I miss Edwin Diaz, but Munoz and Brash are fun to watch. Yeah, I like him. One oh two, right at the knees on Tucker, and he flails at it. He ain't touching that. Munoz. Munoz's arm live today, man. That thing's he's warm. One, two count. Munoz comes set. Fastball up a little bit. Tucker with a good eye. Two, two. Oh, yeah. Whatever happened to Bellinger? The guy was MVP and then all of a sudden forgot to play ball. It happens in baseball, man. Especially when you removed out the steroid era, which was sometimes prolonging careers falsely. You, you got more of now of that varied variance that you've gotten in baseball through the years. Pitch is knocked up high into the air here. Ty France hovers underneath it. 
and he will make the catch. But uh, I think that it's just more of what you see is uh, the way a beta goes. There's a lot of stories like that in baseball. Guys that go long, even in, as they get into the middle of their prime, they just kind of fall off. Can't, can't keep it together. And you never know when work ethic factors into it. Maybe they fall out of love with the game. There's other factors too. Roy says Presley coming back from paternity leave. Presley? Sector 7 says, Cal comes in and our pitcher's killing it. Love it. Cal is for real. Oh, yeah, he's great behind the dish. Just great. And two first pitch. Boy, Munoz hitting 102 like it's effortless. Fouled off and <laughs> Bre Bregman just looks back at like the catcher like, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> what am I going to do with that? 102, really? Oh, one pitch now. Briggs loading up. Oof, nasty slider on the corner. Looked a couple inches off the plate. Got the benefit of the doubt by the ump. But I, I, if I'm Bregman, I'd do the same thing. I ain't doing I'm not going to touch that. What do you? Give me a break, ump. And you're going to give him a couple inches on each side of the plate. <laughs> All right, two outs. 0-2 delivery here to Alec Bregman. Munoz is set. The wind, 103 miles an hour. Right on the back edge of the plate, but a ball. Two eight three says Kirby making the start on Tuesday. Oh yeah, I'll probably be live streaming that game. I would say. One hundred and three miles an hour. He's cooking. Knocked meekly over to the left side. Suarez has got it. Throws it back across. Ty France makes the play for the final out. Seattle comes down to the final three. Can they turn it around? Folks, do they have any magic left in their pockets here as we come up in this next inning? Here we go. Here we go. Sector 7 says, do you plan on streaming during any of the Ranger games? YouTube is bad about notifying me, so it'd be super cool if I knew ahead of time. Yeah, I will definitely try to. At the, I'm commit, I'll commit at least Sector 7 to do one. We'll try to get two in if we can this week on the Rangers. So I'm going to try to do as much as I can on it. Sometimes stuff comes up for me with work where it gets harder to um, kind of hard to get that set out in front. But I, I should be able to do something with it. There's no reason we can't. I'm down. Goyo says, damn, that's the fastest fastball I've ever seen him this, I've seen this year. I think 103 is as high as I've seen. That thing was loaded for bear. Greg says, comeback season. Let's go. Rally hats, folks. Let's get that energy going this right direction now. I'm psyched to see George Kirby, though, 2 two eight three on Tuesday. That's cool. It looked like we got some pretty good matchups against the Rangers pitchers into the this next series. If we're looking for a good series to kind of bounce back on, this might uh, this might be set up nicely for us to do so if that's the way this plays out. Let's make some noise. Let's get it. There we go. Top of the lineup. Maybe we get Julio even off the bench here. Three, three runs is a lot against this closer. He don't mess around. Sector 7 says there was a metric I saw about pitcher's velocity over a week, and Munoz topped it completely. I bet. I bet. You don't see the people throwing 103. It's just that's just hard, hard to do. You know how powerful I'd feel if I could throw 103 miles an hour. I'd never throw a slider. Every single pitch would just be. Every single pitch would be 103. And I'd be I'd be belligerent about it. <laughs> uh, when when was Winker back in the lineup? Not sure. Twelfth man probably rolled his ankle. If he rolled his ankle, it's going to be a day to day thing. Probably out a few games if that's the case. Toro walk off home run. Uh, if we get down to Toro, maybe. Well, wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, it's Ryan Presley. Okay. I thought their other guy the other night was their closer, but I guess it's this guy. My bad. Got to get up on my Astro knowledge. Running out the gray beard, man. Got to watch out for those gray beards. Gives them an extra mile per hour on their delivery. Crawford up the plate here now. Taking a first pitch ball down in the dirt. 
Ryan Presley, it's just been announced, has retired 27 consecutive batters. And I say that to jinx him, of course. He's retired 27 consecutive batters prior to this game. All right, we got 1-0, comes set. Deals on in, hits the black on the outside port of the plate, 94 miles an hour for strike. Steven says, is this the hero inning where they swing at everything? Not so far. Crawford's doing what you want to see here. You need base runners. At least take a first pitch strike. That's what you'd tell your guys, so I like that. Wouldn't necessarily take two first pitch fastball strikes, but he does. Takes another pitch on the outside part of the plate. One and two. Astro pitchers, doesn't matter whether it's starters or relievers in this series, have done a great job of staying on top of accounts on these Mariner batsmen. They just, we can't stay ahead in too many of these counts, and it just puts them so much in a defensive position. That ball's thrown down into the dirt. Draws it out to two and two. Oh, thank you, Rory. So he's the closer. He's been off the last three games for paternity leave. All right. All right. Two two count here. Presley comes set. Crawford wiggling that bat. Well, Crawford sort of golfs it and just knocks it right in the air to the right. Right fielder definitely swung far out of the zone there and put it on a line to the right fielder, one out. Sector 7 says, Mariners have more ankle injuries in 2022 than playoff appearances since 2021. <laughs> facts. <laughs> Big facts. Oh, he's got red and gray in his beard? That's a, that's a two extra mile per hour or just extra movement on its own. All right, Ty Fran steps up. He's two for four today. He's had some pretty good at bats. Let's see if Ty can get a start off here. Presley comes set. Almost hits Ty again. God, I swear that ball's got a magnet in it for Ty. He just gets hit so often. All right, Ty getting, getting comfortable, swaying his hips back and forth, getting red. Presley comes set, 1-0 delivery. Again, down in the dirt. Presley's had a couple of throws here in this inning where he's put it very far out in front of the plate in the dirt. Rory says, Presley says an outs throws record for consecutive outs by a reliever. It's 27 now, right? Pretty good, 20 or 28. All right, 2-0 delivery here, Ty. Please be patient. There you go. Ah, the ump gave him a call. That thing was three inches off the plate. Come on, Blue. Come on, Blue. It's nowhere close. 2-1 delivery. Oh, did he hold up? No, nope, they said he didn't. I thought he held up there. Brutal. All right, it's on the line. Could go either way on that. Either way. 2-2. Two -two. Come on, Ty. Right. Oh, great job there. Astros try to attack that outside part of the plate and see if they can get Blue to, to make that same call. If Presley gets a little bit closer there, that, that's going to be interesting from where it was on the other pitch. All right, 3 2 tie. Come on, buddy. One out. Presley steps off the mound here for a second, gets his breath, wipes off some sweat. Back to set. Here we go. Payoff delivery. Ty hits it weakly over to shortstop. Looks like he just got a little bit fooled there on the play. First baseman picks it on a poor throw for an out. Two men down. Umps want to go home, Spectre 7 says. Yeah, I kind of was thinking that too. <laughs> it's real hot. We won't go home, okay? Let's go home.
All right. Here we go. Lewis is actually still in the game, so I, I thought that was off with that. A little bit weird now they put that together, but he is still in the game here. Lewis has had some tough calls himself on by the ump at the at the dish today, and another weak weak little fly ball just meekly hit out in the center. First pitch swinging, and that will wrap up this ball game. So the Astros show the Mariners here over this three-game series that they are still kings of the West and that the Mariners maybe not quite ready yet there to topple this juggernaut. And I don't think any of us thought necessarily they were, though we would have liked to have seen a lot more of a competitive series here and to get swept like this after 14 games in a row. It's, it makes you question a little bit of how far along are the Mariners? Are they ready to go? I still do maintain that this is all going to shake out at the end where this team will be a playoff team. Whether or not they can truly push an Astros or a Yankees in the playoffs and be a threat in that realm of things remains to be seen. And that's going to require probably a lot more work and a few more additions and guys getting healthy that are currently not healthy. And uh, it can happen. But there's a lot of work to do to get there. And as, as Greg says in the chat, we didn't have any Julio Rodriguez in this series. We cannot undersell what Julio has been for this ball club. He has been the spark plug. He has been the central figure within this lineup. He's made a lot of things go and work. And not only what he brings to the lineup, but what he brings defensively. I, think, I feel like you missed his glove in the outfield in this series as well. And you can't undersell both of those components. Now, would it have been enough to get us a win in this series or a couple wins? I don't know. But it, it certainly would have helped. Certainly would have helped. Um, and props to the Astros in this series. They play great baseball. Their their hitters came up with a with a plan and approach, as you often see with these batter with these Astro hitters. Whereas our hitters weren't always showing that consistently. I'm not going to knock Robbie Ray today as far as the type of game he has. I mean, you see these swings they're showing on the highlights on these home runs. It's down at the knees on the inside part of the plate. You have other hits where there's a bloop here, a seeing eye single there. Uh, the Astros beat the shift on a given play on a, just a weak little knobber. Those aren't necessarily things I'm going to really hold Robbie Ray's feet to the fire. At the end of the day, he's been a good addition, in my opinion, and he's been something that's been a benefit to this rotation and team, and I'm in favor of that deal that uh, DePoto gave him. I would like to see this team get aggressive here as we approach the deadline and try to find a way at this point to, to perhaps maybe you know, make some adjustments here a little bit, find a way to get this um, going in a bit better direction as far as let's add let's add a little bit more on. Yeah, we've got some help on board, but let's not just rely upon Hanniger and, and Lewis getting back to right. And let's go make a move or two. And I'm, again, I'm not saying let's mortgage the farm system here, but let's go see where there's maybe a team now starting to get into sell mode here as we get in the trade deadline. And just to add a couple of key pieces here on this team, if you can. Maybe it's not possible, but if it is, let's see if Depoto can be aggressive, which I am counting on he is. Um, thank you, Jack, and all the Astro, uh, Astro fans for coming on in the chat today. I, I always, I like, as I do on my Hawks Nest channel, which is my sister channel to this, um, I really do like it when we can get fans of other teams in here because I think it does widen out the, the breadth of discussion and it helps to educate you a little bit more on your opponent, which only makes the game more enriching to watch. And the only thing I always ask is just people come in and be respectful. And you guys have been, over the two-day period here with the Astros that we've gone live, you guys have been really awesome coming in and being respectful on that. So thank you to all the fans, the Astro fans coming in and being cool, as well as my uh, Mariner fans. It's been great, lively discussion. I hope you guys are digging this. I'm loving doing these live streams. We're going to keep trying to do more of them here. We'll see if I can do the opening game tomorrow with Tech. Texans uh, with Texas. Uh, if not, like I said, I will try to get at least one or two games this weekend on live stream in those games. I love doing this quite a bit. A uh, couple things here. Let's get in the chat. Uh, Goyo Falcon says, as an Astro fans, I can honestly say the Mariners have one of the brightest futures in baseball. Well, thank you, Goyo. That's like what I like to say. You guys are on your middle of your run. You're on the middle of your, you get a certain set amount of years, we're in the middle of the run. And because the Astros did like what Mariners are doing now, I mean, Astros are the blueprint. And that what you guys first did was you sucked for, for some years, right? You didn't try to find the shortcuts or the fast approaches. You sucked for a good amount of years to assemble the young ball players that then you could cap around and continue to build that farm system up around them. And that's the same thing that I'm advocating for what our Mariners should be doing and now have begun to do. But in this 20 year bad period of bad baseball, I've not been able to say that over the majority of that time frame. It's really been over in the last three, four years that you've seen that true commitment to going back to the farm system like the Astros did. And if you do it this way, not only do you build a team that's a contender and a team that can contend for a, for a couple of years, but you can elongate out that run because you're not looking for always the short, quick fixes. You're just trusting your process and building from within. And you're not giving out bad contracts in free agency. So it is, it is a model for us to duplicate and look at. And it's one that I think the Mariners are truly they're truly going along that trek of things. Um, Eat the Crab says Soto would be worth the farm. 
He grabby would be. Uh, one reason I don't know, you know, like I wouldn't hate making the move of Soto. I have some trepidation about it. Um, you know, and mainly as, as much as it's, it, we're going on, and this is maybe going to be one of my little get stuck in my craw type um, subjects in, in regards to this, but outfield defense, do we feel comfortable with Soto out in right field? Is he going to be a problem for us in right field if he's out there? How much worse is Soto for us in right field as far as his defensive, defensive um, acumen versus Haggerty? And, and it's not to say Haggerty is about anywhere near the, the player Soto is, but again, that you know, if you're, if you're losing a lot of offset in defense by what you're gaining offensively, it's going to be a net plus for any team that trades for Soto. But to me, we need to be looking for more and more of those full pluses that we're adding, less of us trying to sort of split the difference and more of us, you know, truly finding pieces that are adding, you know, in whatever they're giving us rather than we've got to have to do this offset thing a little bit with them just to a degree. Wouldn't hate the Soto trade. It would, it would um, electrify the fan base, no doubt about it in that respect. And you already have a fan base. I know I can tell from doing these streams the last couple of days that's ready to see a winner and ready to see this team start to take hold and show them what they can be. But as I do caution, and I will caution throughout these streams as I go through this year, have patience with this ball club. DePoto's doing it the right way. It's been frustrating for 20 years to watch this team play the way they played, but there's a reason that they've been in that mode and they're not in that mode anymore to get those results. It's gonna take some time, but the results will be there. As the Astro fans have pointed out in this stream, our future is bright and, it, and we are going to get there sooner than later. So a tough series here. But a series that I hope is just going to be a blip on the map of this season. We get back Julio soon, and we get to just watch them ride out the rest of this year, hopefully getting hot once again and just keep adding pieces back in the lineup. Here's Hanniger. Here's Lewis getting back to consistency. Here's Julio back in the lineup. Oh, look, Jared Kelnick got called up, and he's now on fire. Now, it may not happen, but it may just. You never know. That's the unpredictability of sports in these long seasons is that they're marathons, not sprints. So you never know what could happen. Um, Steven says, if Winker and Frazier were actually playing to their potential, I would try and go for Soto. It would be a waste to get Soto at this point. I think that's, that is a great point on your part. That's also probably got to be a factor on if you felt this team was a little bit further along in certain other areas of this ball club, maybe a Soto, Soto trade makes a little bit more sense because of that. But because there does look like more that you need to add around the edges here, that that does make you a little bit more hesitant. I think that's a very fair, fair point. Space City says, uh, see you next weekend. Another good live. Salute. Go Astros. Thank you, Space City. Appreciate you jumping in. And as I said, thank you for being so respectful. Uh, Spectre 7 I says, I think we can get Soto for Lewis, Kelnick, Marte, and a couple of other prospects. Uh, it's possible, Spectre 7. I think you're going to have to give up a little bit more than that. I do think that the beginning place on this kind of deal is a Marte, a Marte, Kelnick. How much value does Lewis have at that point? I'm not sure. But I certainly think you have a beginning package that you could put together that could make it interesting for uh, interesting for the Nationals. Um, some of this does depend on who's really in on this and what is really, you hear talk of what the, of what the requirements are gonna be to get Soto, but is it really gonna be that? I gotta trade for this guy and then I gotta spend, I gotta give him the biggest contract in Major League Baseball history. Does that factor into what I've gotta caught? Now you have a couple of years of cheap club control, so it could also be you're just making the move saying this is being done without the contract. And, um, but then again, does that not affect the returns or what you're being asked to give up because you come back to that team and you go, yeah, I get the superstar, but I don't know for sure if he's going to resign with us. And I'm giving you guys, all these guys with all this years of club control at the major league level. Um, and I only get two years with him. So does that impact it as well? And then how many teams? And then it's, a, if it's a bidder's war, it makes it a little bit harder to know what exactly the cost is going to be for this guy. We hear talk, but let's see what happens when the rubber really meets the road as to what a team really truly has to give up for him at this point. Krug says Julio and Soto in the outfield would be insane. The Dominican Devils, yeah, it would be insane. I, I tell you that that middle of the lineup at that point with those two guys, Ty France there, and um, I mean, hell, you got Julio leading off, Crawford going two, third year running France. He's got the protection of of Soto then behind him, and then look at it like this: you're going lefty, righty, lefty, righty in the lineup if you added them that way with Soto running cleanup. That would be a pretty tough lineup to to face. That'd be a pretty tough lineup to face. So uh, it would be exciting. No doubt about it. Adam would be insane and exciting. It's just a hard, long odds, I think. Long, long odds. Stephen Contrell, I would push more for going out and getting Reynolds, Castillo, and Drury to start for trades for this team. I'd say that would be a little more realistic. Agreed. Agreed, Stephen. I think you're very much on the right path with that. And I think it's much more likely we're looking at something other than Soto at this point. And those guys would make me excited. 
Those guys would help this team out. Those guys would be a positive without that offset thing that I was talking about. And certainly a starter, a starting pitcher right now is, has got to draw a lot of priority, even with the team at times struggling a little bit to, uh, to generate consistent runs. I think the runs are going to come. I think with the extra bats coming in the lineup, those guys settle down. Julio, um, you know, Julio Haniger, uh, and Lewis, I think is sort of your, your trifecta or do help to galvanize this lineup through the second half. Dragon Dude says, good stream at the Crow's Nest. Thank you, Dragon Dude. Appreciate you in the chat. Awesome having you in here. Sector 7 says, my ultimate prediction is the Dodgers getting Soto. They have a deep talent pool to give up for them, and that propels them to the World Series. God, it's a, I hadn't thought of it that way, but that does, that does make a lot of sense for the Dodgers. It really does. Uh, because, you know, the other part that factors in those Dodgers is they damn well know that they've got the money to spend to give them that contract. Dodgers are not going to be uh, fearful of handing out you know, they're not going to be feel, fearful of handing out that big deal to Soto after making that trade either. So fantastic point on your part, man. Agreed. Steve says, oh, and don't, and don't forget the Astros giving us Alvarez as well. <laughs> Laughing out loud. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, guys, I had a great time with you all today. Please do me this favor. If you like what you're listening to on this, even if you're listening to this via replay, do hit the like button for me and click it on subscribed. So let's keep getting the subscriber train going here. We've had awesome growth here. Can't ask for anything more from you guys in that respect. I do appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate everybody being so respectful and uh, just being able to just talk baseball, man, getting into the nerdy elements of it. That's what I love doing, just like we like to do on my football side, which is the hawk's nest over on the other end of things. So thank you to all of you guys. You uh, are amazing as, as it is on the other side. So I appreciate you guys. Let's get our Mariners bouncing back tomorrow. We'll see if I can try to get live to you. Like I said, we'll get a game or two up for sure here with the Rangers. So uh, jump back on in here, guys. But do not ever forget. Don't you ever, ever forget. Go Mariners. <laughs>